Peace and Black Power family. Black Welcome power. to another song that is Zombie Meta TV. Black, Black News 103. Black News Alert. Too. All right, family. Black Power. This is a disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed in this video are not necessarily reflect, represent the views and opinions held by this channel's owner, Chat Sarnetta, Black News 102, and News Sarnetta Studios. The owner of these channels is just the messenger, just and we messenger. share information having no intentions whatsoever yes. to misrepresent or mislead anybody. Unfortunately, right. we cannot always warrant the total accuracy of the information in this video. Chat and cannot be held accountable for error. You heard. Enter at your own risk, family. Peace and black power all right peace and black power to my brother tommy sotomayor once again tommy um i'm giving you the chance to go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience to those that that is out there that don't know who you are introduce yourself to the family and let's get this going well, what's going on everyone if you don't know who i am i'm just a guy who does youtube videos and typically in my youtube videos what i do is discuss uh the state of black people and uh most Mostly black women. I try to talk about what I believe is the group that calls themselves the backbone of the black community. So if they are the backbone of the black community, then what we should be able to do is to hold them accountable. All right, brother. Without any further ado, I would like to ask you, brother. Um, I hear that you are doing a tour. I hear that you are doing a tour. Um, what is your tour about? And will you be coming into New York, into New York City? Yeah, I'll be in New York. Uh, the last time I did a tour, I was in New York. I'm coming back to New York. Um, the tour is called the Anti-PC Tour. And in that tour, what we are doing is going around, well, I, what I'm doing is going around and talking about the thing, political correctness, and how it's destroying America as a whole, and especially Black people. Oh, okay. All right. That's peace, brother. Um, your last name is Harris. Where did Sotomayor come from? How did you end up with the town with the um, title Sotomayor? Well, well I, I want to do, do me a favor. Number one, as was my father's name, but number two, I don't know okay. why I want to do that. I think that's that's inappropate. I mean, okay. you're signing. All right, no problem. That's what I. That's why I said, if there's any question I ask you, brother, just say. I very understand. Like that was the first thing, and it's like it's weird when people do it. But as my father's, that was my father's last name. Okay, I took on my father's last name, just like David Bowie's last name was David David Jones. Uh, just like um, Freddie Mercury's name was Farouk. I mean, it's weird that people do that, but okay, go ahead. Okay, I, I respect <laughs> that. No problem, brother. Um, when you first started your channel, what was your platform about? And is it the same today now? Or do you ele did you ever elevate it? Is it the same as, it's, as it was when you first started it out? Uh, my channel is, when I started out, it was actually, I was talking about men's rights. And as I spoke about men's rights, I talked about black men's rights. And in black men's rights, I noticed that there was one group of people who really didn't seem to care about black men's rights. And that was the people who kept saying they care about them. Right? So it evolved to, I wanted to point out that if black men wanted to understand where their rights were going and who didn't care about their rights, they, had, they looked no farther than in the kitchen where their mother was or in their bed where their girlfriend was. Mm -hmm. All right, my brother. Um... When you be going in and you talk about the black woman, why why you don't never say um why do you why did you why you don't never use the word some black woman instead of saying like all black woman? It appears that you are always accusing all black women of these things that you are talking about. Why you never say some of the black women or some of the sisters? It make it That's looks like you always say all of our sisters when you talk. I don't know if your audience is hearing it, but sometimes when I speak to you, it feels like I'm getting a feedback. Do you hear it? No, I don't hear no feedback. Yeah, like as soon as I say it, it comes right back. Oh, no, I don't hear it. Yeah, the people don't hear no um, feedback either. Hmm. That's, you know, I think that's only because we are running the show on both channels. That's why I think. But um, guys, look, in, look inside the chat room. Do y'all hear feedback coming in the chat room? Uh, I know not on my end is not. Yeah, so they're saying it's an echo. Yeah, they're saying it. They're like, when I speak, there's an echo. Okay, oh, there's I, an I, echo I, when you speak. That is only yeah. because um, you running the stream on your channel as well. I think that's what it is. 
Um, okay, well, well, we'll just have to deal with it. Um, right. Oh, see, some people saying no. Like, see what I'm saying? Yeah, they saying, saying no. no. Some I, people saying yes. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah, some are saying no. Some are saying yeah, but I hear it. So we'll, we'll try to figure it out. We'll try to figure it out, though. Okay. Did you hear my question? When you talk yes. about black women, why not no, use the words some black women instead of making it appear like you're talking about all of our sisters? Well, there's twofold. One, I don't say some because if it doesn't apply to you, then you'd understand it doesn't. Just like when the, I'm from Atlanta mm-hmm. and people say niggas in Atlanta gay. They never say some. They just say them niggas in Atlanta are gay. Uh, when we talk about black women, y'all say black women are beautiful. We all know some ugly black women. Y'all say black women are smart. Black women are educated. We all know some uneducated black women, but nobody ever says, hey, not all. So when I'm speaking about these people, if I use the word some, they would then turn around and pretend it was not them, it was someone else. When I just say black women, if you know it's not you, you know it's not you and you have no problem. Just like when they say black men need to take care of their kids. So I know you take care of yours. So there's no issue. You don't get mad when they say it. You understand what they're talking about, that there's a segment of people who don't and you don't get mad. So I look at it as I could say some and they would never acknowledge that it was them. So instead of saying some, I'm just going to say it. And if you assume it's you, then it probably is you. Okay. All right, my brother. Um, I noticed sometime, Brother Tommy, that you go on these Facebooks and join Hood Rat Girls page and call them all kinds of negative things. And then you say, see, this is black woman. Isn't that a forced narrative to go by, to go by? Isn't that a forced narrative, my brother? When you start saying, see, there was a black woman right there. When they start well, clapping back at you. Well, hold on. You said... I've noticed that you go on hood rat black women's pages and call right, them names. Facebook pages. Right. Do you understand the sentence you just said? Yes. You called him a name. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I know exactly what I said, because what I'm trying to show you is that when you go on the, the hood rat channel, you call them a name. But check it out. What I'm saying is when you go on the hood rats channel, you come back and you make it apply to all the other women that's in the community. That's what I mean when I said you go on other hood rats channel and then you start calling them kind of, you know, all kind of names. And then when they strike back at you, it's like you try to make it look like that's all black women. That's what I mean by that. How would I know it's a hood rat? I go in a group. I go on Facebook. I don't know it's a hood rat that's on um, media takeout. It's a black woman there. Uh, I don't know what these people are. <laughs> I go in a group and it's a black woman who's doing it. How do I know it's a hood rat? I just well, know it's I a mean, you can look at them and see these are hood rats, Tommy. We got hood well, rat black women. We got hood rat niggas, you know, so you can easily go on there and see that you know, these are hood rats. These are not working women. They're not out there doing the job like like most of the sisters that's out there in the offices. I'm talking about hood rats, you okay, know, that's in the hood. Go to, and you could go to white people's pages who are helping out black folks and doing good stuff to help black folks, mm-hmm. but that ain't what you're trying to expose. Just like when the Black Power, Black Lives Matter movement, could go to cops who aren't killing black folks who are actually helping the community, but they don't go there. And the news, the news. When you go to the news station, they could actually go to a lot of stuff that they don't. ESPN could go to politics, but they just go to sports. When I go there, I'm trying to show people what's going on. And if it's going on, it's going on. And I think that it's way too many black women identify with these type of women because if it wasn't, I wouldn't be able to find that many women doing it. If it was that few women doing it, there'd be no way that every day I could find thousands of them doing it. It'd be impossible. My job would have been over five years ago. I would have been, I would have been um, retreading stuff now. I literally go on Facebook. I don't go to Ratchet Facebook. I go okay. to Facebook and I see it. I don't go to Ratchet Instagram. I go to Instagram. I don't go to the ratchet internet. I go to the internet. And if these black women are doing it in large numbers, that should be a problem. Because let me point something else out to you before you get to your next question. Yes. I guarantee you it's more black women killing their kids than cops killing their kids. I guarantee you it's more the black women twerking and fucking and having kids out of wedlock than, it, than, than by dudes that don't want them than there are cops killing black men. Yet which one do we try to act like is a problem? 
Mm-hmm. Have you ever said to yourself, man, you know what? I, I need to calm down my rhetoric when it comes to black women. I need to really calm down my rhetoric. Have you ever thought about that, brother? Or said that to yourself? In the process of, quote unquote, thinking about that, I would have to say, no. Because in, if I were to say, I think about calming it down, Malcolm X didn't calm down how he spoke. Malcolm X didn't say, you know what? I got to not speak what I know is the truth. The truth is the truth. And mainly when you're telling the truth, it's going to hurt or offend someone. I'm not trying to hurt or offend these people, but I'm not going to sit around and not say what I know is right. The things that I'm saying I know is right. When I try to calm it down, let me tell you something. When it comes to black women, y'all spent 20, 30 years calling these women queens. I just watched these black women go off on Meek Mill for taking a picture with a non-black woman. He wasn't doing anything with her. He just took a picture. They don't know who this woman was. And they went off on this dude. There's something seriously wrong with that group of people who is that self-entitled that when they see Meghan Markle marry a damn white man, they love the shit out of her. When they see Serena Williams marry a white man, they love him. They still prop up uh, Maya Angelou. And she married two white men. And yet the way I'm speaking is supposed to be wrong. Let me finish it with this. Why would I tone down my rhetoric to a group of people who talk to their own children like this? Shut your black ass up. Sit your black bitch ass down. Black women talk to people like shit. And yet you expect me to talk back to them like they're nice. That doesn't make sense. Show me the black women that go around the Internet, talk to people nicely. Then I'll respond that same way. But see, Tommy, that's what I'm talking about. You say black people, meaning you put all of us. My wife don't talk to her do- my daughter like that. My wife don't talk to her children like that. There are many out there who do not talk to their children like that. So when you say black women does this and black women do that, it's like you putting us all in the box. That's what I'm talking about, my brother. You just did it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, you I, just I did it. I also told you earlier that I'm going to keep speaking like that because if you know it's not you, then you understand. Just like we say white people own slaves. When we say white people own slaves, less than 10% of white people own slaves. It was an expensive proposition, but we still say white people own slaves and nobody corrects them and say, not all. Okay. Um, let me, let me try this right here. Um, you did a show called Don Lemon should be fired because he said white men are the biggest threats in America. You wanted him fired, but don't you think he was just using the same logic of you, of of the not all? I said he should be fired simply because of this. You can't make a statement like that and then turn around and keep the job. Remember, they just fired Megyn Kelly for talking about dressing in blackface, and she didn't do it. She was just saying she saw nothing wrong with it. So when I would speak a lot of times, which it seems like a lot of the black people who hate me don't get, I speak in jest, meaning I'm saying if you're going to make a big case out of this one thing, then you must make a big case out of this. Because if we as black people are trying to get somewhere, we cannot get there being openly hypocritical like that by allowing things that, that asking everybody else to be fired for doing things that we do and nothing happens. There's a problem with that because eventually the people who you're trying to get on your side are going to look at you and say, well, you had no problem fucking over all these white people's lives when they said one thing you didn't like. And then when a black person does it, you don't think we're going to start doing it to them, too? Okay, um, brother Tommy, check. Walk with me on this one. Isn't it fair to say, my brother, that come on, no calls right now. Isn't it fair to say, my brother, that the black woman you do reports on? are from the same background, poor living, poor and living housing projects or poor neighborhoods. How do you, how do we begin to break the cycle of you living in a poor neighborhood, you having a poor schools, living in poor neighborhoods, going to poor schools. And then when we have poor schools, we have what? Poor education. When you have poor education, you have poor teachers, which leads to what? Poor education 
and all of that, brother. So isn't isn't that fair to say? Uh, say it again. I don't understand. It. All right, let say me say it. it again. Let me take it slow. Let me read this right. Isn't it fair to say that the women you do reports on are all from the same background, poor, living in housing projects or poor that, neighborhoods? Not, How do not, we begin to break the cycle when you live in in a poor neighborhood? You have poor schools, and when you are living in poor schools, we have poor teachers who teaching, you know, that's not getting paid correctly. But I then we not. go around and then we repeat the same cycle again. So the people that you are breaking down and going in on are these women who are living in poor neighborhoods, poor low-income jobs, my brother. Well, I can stop you there and say, go ahead. one, all of the women that I see that I speak about in those situations are not, as you stated, poor. That's the sad part about it. Many of these women are not poor. And if they're not, and not only are they not poor, but they get online and claim to the whole world they ain't poor. You know how many of them I've gotten online and talked about how much, how they got money and shit like that, how they rich, can't nobody tell them nothing. So I'm not going to listen to black people tell me, any black person tell me they need, um, some money or they need education when all these black women run around and say what black women are the most educated people in the United States If black people if black women are the most educated women people in the United States then I shouldn't be able to find that many out here wilding out should I you said they're uneducated number two if black women are that poor and are having that much of a problem with their living situation then maybe they should stop having the children which is one of the biggest things that you have that will ruin your finances. That is it. So if we're pointing to what is happening, or if you bind Jordans, because for some reason, all these people who claim that they're poor, they got enough money for the BS in life. They got enough money to get weed. They spend $10 billion on weed. If they just stop doing that, what do you think that would do to the economy of black folks? It would probably change it a lot, and it definitely would help it a lot. So if you're going to try and give these people excuses, then maybe those people should try and use those excuses themselves and stop putting themselves in the hole in the first place. You can't feel sorry for people who put themselves in that hole that they're now claiming is keeping them back. Okay. Um, what is your stance on black women? Do, do you, you hate black women or like what? Talk about that. No, how I don't do you hate feel. Black. How do you feel about black women? Um, I date pretty much nothing but black women. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Walking. There you go, brother. Now, some huh? people might find that shit hard to believe, you know. But but wait a minute. But but why would they find that hard to believe? If they follow me on YouTube, they see how them fine ass black women I'm with. Come on now. Uh-huh. Um, talk to me, brother, <laughs> about um you have came up with names for black women. What is BT one thousand? What the hell is that? That is the black termination, and the 1,000 is the model number. Say that again, brother. The B is black, the T is terminatrix, the 1,000 is the model number. Mm-hmm. Would you like to elaborate? It's like if... Um, <laughs> the BT black terminator 1,000. God damn, oh, Tommy, man. No, that's it. That's being really hard it. on our sisters, brother. How am I being hard on them? They call, wait a minute. They call themselves queens when they don't, when there's no justification for it. Right. Every one of them just sits around calling themselves queen and they've done nothing to, to get this title. When I call you a BT, you did something to get that title. So it's wrong for me to call the, the person doing something to get that title. But, but it's what's not wrong with the, with an upliftment name for our sisters, for our women? Why you can't come with something to uplift them? I don't, I'm, I'm now I'm saying I have never heard you say things where you uplifting our women, where you done a show uplifting black women. Can we look for something in the future with brother Tommy Sotomayor uplifting the black woman? No, because first off, if these women are supposed to be as strong as they claim they are, why would they need a complete stranger to uplift them? Ask yourself that question. Why would a group of strong people need a complete stranger to uplift them? Number one. Number two, if they so strong, why would their ego be so fragile that they look online, see a dude they don't like, a dude they call crispy, black, and ugly anyway, 
Why would that dude's opinion of them bother them at all? Lastly, I said earlier, y'all for the last 30 years have been big up in people who didn't deserve it, calling them queens, doing all of that stuff. And when they didn't do anything to deserve it, they kept asking for more and kept doing less. So why would I contribute to something that I know is a problem? It is a problem what y'all are doing. And no offense, when y'all are running around telling these people who are straight up assholes that they're queens to the point that now they call themselves queens, no matter what it is they do. I know I'm a queen. But you're on the bus slapping people. I know I'm a queen. But you're walking around with 99 inch yakky. No, I won't do it. There's enough signetters and, and, and brother polites and, and young Pharaoh and all these other people out there blowing smoke up black women's ass for me to do it. And lastly, I actually did do a channel called True Queen TV. I tried that crap. Well, all I did was put up good shit that black women did. And you can put it on YouTube right now and you'll see it. And guess how many people watched it? How many? None. Because black women like drama in general. Why do you think media takeout does what does better than something else? Why do you think the shade room does better? Don't ask someone to give you something positive when you literally ignore people who say something positive. Most black men who run around and are real positive to black women. Guess what they call them? Squares. They call them lame. But the dude who whooping ass and got kids by a bunch of people and going around with his pants down below his butt and always calls him drama because he cheat on you every week. That dude can't keep women away from him. Mm, mm, mm. Tommy Sotomayor. Once again, family, we are here tuned in with Tommy Sotomayor and his perspective. Okay. What are caused the downfall of black women that you are talking about? What do you think? Oh, I always see, say my wife running in here saying, Dan, that's the question I wanted to ask. <laughs> what and what do you think that caused the downfall of our women? What about the black man? What about you? When I say black men, I'm talking about us, me and you, Tommy. What about us? Okay, it's, it's two questions you're asking. Where have we failed as black men? Yes, right? yes. What or who caused the downfall of the black woman that you're talking about? Well, I would say a lot of it is in sales, but I would go back to this part of they've always had this weird jealousy of non-black women. And it's come from them. And then you had this thing called the state, which Lyndon Baines Johnson gave black women this idea of we'll help you with this money if you kick the man out. You kick the man out and that's what happened. The man got kicked out of the house so the woman could get this money. The man went along with it because if the black man had some pride, he would have stopped. He would have said, I'm not going to deal with that. But he didn't. He was right there with her, encouraging her to take that little bit of money. And girl, I'll just get out of the house for a little while. And when they give you the check, I'll come back. Well, what happened was, was that happened in the 70s. Then black women, instead of aligning with their man, they aligned with the feminist movement. Weirdest thing I'd ever seen. They all of a sudden, want you. so when you want to call people coon, it seemed like you called the black women who joined the feminist movement coons because that was the white woman's struggle, not black women. But black women want, got so much envy for white women that they wanted to join them in their little stupid power struggle with their husbands. So they joined them then. And then you had a community that was now being raised with nothing but women and children in the 80s. And then you had crack. Then you had these young black men who couldn't get jobs. And what they decided to do was, well, I can make some money selling this crack. You had so many young black boys who then, when they didn't have their fathers, started joining gangs because that was the only family they had. That was the only male, only male camaraderie they would see. So then you lost that generation of blacks. Then you went to the 90s and lost another generation of blacks because in the 80s, you used to at least make fun of black women wearing weed. Well, black women no longer gave a shit what men said. And in the 90s, they now wanted to wear anything that they could put on their head. Black women will crochet hair before they wear their own hair. And you've seen it. They'll put anything on top of their head than their own hair. So now you have children being raised by children being raised by children. And these black women have not had one father in their lives. So if you've never had a father and you're a little girl, the one thing you don't respect is the word of a man. And when you don't respect the word of a man and you now have the generation in the 90s and 2000s, which said what? I don't need no man. I could do it all by myself. So they went around bragging about now they don't need a man because they had their daddy in their house. And that daddy was called the United States government. That's when I came up with the phrase white daddy that everybody's now using. 
Now everybody wants to use the phrase white daddy, but they won't tell you they got it from the so-called coon. Because I'm the one that said that's their damn daddy, that white man, the system. And they decided to go and rely on him. At that point, you can't tell a group of people nothing who, do, who don't need you or rely on you or a thing. And right now, black women talk major shit to black dudes. You hear a black woman go off on a dude for not having a car and she don't have a car. You hear a black woman go off on a dude for not having a job when she's on Instagram selling ass. That's her job. She's either selling weave or selling ass. In 2018, you tell me if I'm lying, one of the main jobs that black women have right now is either escorting or selling weed. But them motherfuckers run around and act like they are, are business owners. You go to Instagram right now, most of the black girls got a, a booking information. You know what that is? It means you can buy ass from them. Right now, they freely are in these Facebook groups telling people that they that they sell ass. And now we have a stripper culture to where people are looking up to strippers now. So regular girls who go to class walk around looking like strippers. You go to a regular black girl who claims she's educated. She's still looking like a stripper. And when this becomes a large number of people instead of a small number. You then have a problem. So where it started was with FDR. I mean, excuse me, not FDR, but LBJ and not LeBron James, Lyndon Baines Johnson. And it ended with us taking the bite of the apple and enjoying the taste of the fruit. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of days ago, my brother, I, I interviewed Cynthia G. And um, some of the guests that was calling in was accusing her of being the male Tommy Sotomayor, a female Tommy Sotomayor. Um, I'm quite sure people right now are saying you are the female version of Cynthia G, where they was accusing Cynthia G of beating up on the black man the way you beat up on the black woman. What is your thoughts on that? I know you know who Cynthia G is, brother. Do you see yourself the reverse of Sister Cynthia G? Because she was strongly denying, like, hold on, I'm not no Tommy Sotomayor. So shout out to my sister, Cynthia G, the most lovely, beautiful Cynthia G that's out there probably watching right now. Well, <laughs> no, we're not the same. Let me tell you why. One, I'm logical. Two, I'm well-spoken. Three, I'm thought out. And I'm just more popular than this person because this person says, and says the same thing with his cool logic and, and uh, being a male cool and he's being a male cool and y'all listen to you a grown ass man listen to a woman sit around saying being a male cool every five seconds dusty being a male cool and then and then they want to bring up weed and there's nothing wrong with me wearing weed but there's something wrong with you dating a white person that's stupid and y'all would listen. Any grown man would listen at this fool, sit there and tell you, there's nothing wrong with me wearing this baby doll hair on my head. But it's something wrong with you dating a white woman is ridiculous. Maybe if they stood by what they were saying, then they would be like me. Because everything I say, when you heard it from day one, you hear it now. And what my stuff is based on, it isn't based on, well, let me just make this uh, about this race thing. Because I tell people all the time, I commute on logic, not race. So if somebody is smart enough and has got the same goal as I got, but they white, I don't really give a crap. But you got a person who sits around and well used to date white people and used to do used to sell ass to white people. Now they telling you uh, white people bad. Come on, dog. Now and then know, openly on her stuff. But wait, let me finish. Go ahead. And then openly on her stuff said that she used to do it, but then white men had to pay. And y'all still listening to this woman. All right. So no, we're not. The same. Now you know, Tommy. Black women been wearing wigs for a long time, dealing with in the ancient times, in ancient days. And what happened was, no, you, for real, brother, you can still, you can go to the museum and see the wigs in the museum in ancient comedic science, dealing with that day. But what I want to show you and share with you, my brother, is could it really be, when you really look at it, we as men don't want to take no responsibility don't want to take no flaws. We just think it's our women because, see, that's the punk in us. That's the punk in the black man is that we want to lash out on our women. We want to blame our sisters for everything when, in fact, the reason why our sisters are dying they here today, are permanent they here today, is because the black man, Tommy, we was looking at them goddamn white women. 
We was loving them white women's hair when they swing their hair back. And so our sisters are sitting on the side looking at us, looking at them white women with their damn hair, fixing their hair. And so our sisters said, God damn, you know what? We are losing our women. We, I mean, we are losing our men. We got to compete with this white girl. I'm going to straighten my hair. But what we did when she started straightening, baby, you looking beautiful. Baby, you looking good. So now in 2018, we are becoming a little conscious and a little of loving ourselves. And now so we want to point on our black woman. We want to beat up the black woman instead of saying to her, baby, I love your natural, baby. Can you wear this for me, baby? See, I think if we was to talk to our women like that, I think, brother Tommy Sotomayor, that they will come back into their natural. But we got to let them know that we love you the way you looking, queen. What's wrong with that statement, Tommy? Everything. First off, what you said is untrue. I understand you trying to bring it back to Kemet and all this stuff. But let me tell you something. They weren't wearing uh, weaves and stuff in the 20s. No, uh, no. I said, wearing... I said wigs. Wigs. They was wearing long, straight wigs. They weren't doing it in the 20s. They weren't doing this when Pam Greer was the number one black chick that we were loving to get with. And then you claim, let's not blame black women. Then you turn right back around and blame black men for their indulgence of trying to look white by saying that we were looking at the white woman. Well, give them a correct history because what you said was incorrect. Let me tell you what correct history is. Correct history was in the United States. They were able to fuck the master and live in the house if he liked the pussy enough. They were able to have mixed kids by the master and then be able to have their mixed kids be able to go on and go to college. And many of them ended up owning slaves while the black man, if he looked at the white woman wrong, would get his ass lynched. In the 1920s, black women were running around with white men. In the 1930s, they were. They even went to court, the Supreme Court, to be able to marry a black, a, a white man before we could. And during the same time, which Emmett Till was getting his ass killed for it. They went to the Supreme Court to marry a white man while we were getting killed for it. And yet we didn't turn around and try to look like Brad Pitt to try and get black women to love us. Right now, black women to this day swoon over a white man being with a black woman. They swoon over it. They just love Meghan Markle. They love Serena Williams. They love Eve. Now she got her white man. They even got an article saying that black women, the white billionaires love black women. But do you see us running around trying to look like Brad Pitt so we can get them to come back to us? Yes, lastly, at one time, yes, we did. When you look that. at all the singers, Tommy, when you look at all the musicians back then coming up, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead brother. Stop. I'll let you do it because ahead, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll let you finish. Go and ahead. I said, no. now you don't see Negroes like you, me, or anybody else running around trying to look like Brad Pitt. You don't. But they have taken weave to an epidemic level right now. So don't give me that. And lastly, if they were doing it to keep us, why are marriage rates, why did weave rates go up and marriage rates went down? Why did weave rates go up and fatherless homes, uh, fa father in the home went down? So what you're saying there isn't true. Because if it was true, the numbers would be trending just like the hair does, but it doesn't. Because they ain't wearing that hair for us. They wearing it for themselves. And anytime a woman tells you the truth, they will tell you, we don't do this crap for you. We do it for other women, just like they dress for other women. Again, if women were doing this stuff to please black men, the main thing black men ask for, and even your men over in your comment section, know I'm telling the truth when I say this. The main thing we ask for is a peaceful household and a sweet, affectionate, loving woman. And every time we ask for that, they tell us, that ain't me. I'm a strong black woman. Get you a white bitch. That's why you get a white bitch so you can run over. So if we ask them all the time, not for hair like white women, but for attitudes like white women, and they tell us they refuse to give us that, then don't tell me that they're giving us weed to make us happy because it doesn't. And every man out there would rather deal with a bald head black bitch that's really sweet and take care of his kids than a long weave wearing hoe. All right. Once again, Tommy Sotomayor is in the building family. Um, let me remind you, my brother, Tommy Sotomayor. <laughs> let me remind you, my brother, that at one time, Malcolm X wore a conch. Back then, those conks was out there. The same time our women was perming their hairs, 
the black men was permanent here. Look at the spinners. Look at James Brown. I could go on and on and on and telling you how the black man wanted to be just like that white boy. He was Brad Pitt. He wanted to be just like Brad Pitt. But because the black man became more conscious and got up out of that quicker, now we're looking at our women and we want to beat them down, brother, instead of uplifting them. This is what I'm saying, Tommy. Why is it so hard for us as black men to just go over there and every time I see my sisters, I say, damn, sister, your hair look beautiful today. Why is it so hard? Have you ever complimented when you do see the black woman with her natural? Do you give her a compliment, Tommy? Dude, number one, I won't date. I'll fuck a weave wearer, but I won't date any. You won't see me on date. You won't see my girlfriend, a girl I'm claiming, with these things because I think it's it sends the wrong message. Number two, I bring on black women on my show all the time talking about their natural hair, loving the fact that they have natural hair. I compliment them on their natural hair. I go out of my way to compliment black women who I see in person with their natural hair. So when you said this whole Malcolm X did it, when you got to go back to when before we were born, that's a problem, sir. And I'm not trying to be funny, but that is a problem. When you got to go back to before we were born, and then you said we became conscious faster. Well, whatever we did, we are under more scrutiny to be like the white men than they are to be like the white women. Because the white man is the most powerful person on earth. And yet we have created our own niche to the point where they're trying to be like us. We have. We've changed the face of music. We've changed the face of dress. We've changed the face of how they even carry themselves, bro. Because right. we stayed true to us. All right. Because Let me ask you a question, ourselves. brother, and then we're going to move on to the next topic. Um, who, who do you suppose is the man of their household when you look at the white man and white woman? Who is the protector? Well, that would be the man. You said who's the man. It that would, would be, be the man. white man, right? Correct. He's the protector of his household. Who would be mm -hmm. the protector of all the other nationalities that we are talking about? I ain't talking about black people, like Chinese or the Russians or whatever. Who is the protector and the, and the maintainer of the household? Well, Russians are white people, but right, it, correct. It, it, would, it would be it would be their men. We are right. the only patriarchal society on planet Earth. So the, the point I'm getting to, Tommy, my brother, is. Why you are not the protector of the black woman? You can't be the protector, the maintainer, and the cherisher of our women if we are constantly beating them down, banging on them. That's what I'm talking about. Do you see us as a protector? Are you a protector of black women, brother? And if not, why not? Let me give you an example of why I'm not a protector of black women. Number one, like in, in your comment section, how do you keep seeing? I'm 42 years old. I'm not 12. I'm not eight. At 42 years old, I'm still being called by black folks who disagree with my points because I get that. Guess what I'm hearing from them? And there's usually a lot of women and women pass this down to the men. Crispy. So when you have a problem with the amount of melanin I have, then don't ask me to protect you, ma'am, because you are the birth of the, the birther of people who look just like me. And you are the main people who raise them and talk shit to them, who tell them how. And then you make your children grow up to fuck with people about that same skin color that you claim is supposed to be uniting us. And that's bullshit. But let's go back to this. Am I the protector of black women? No, I'm not. And white men aren't the protector of just random ass white women either. The family starts at home. So if there was supposed to be a protector of a black woman, it's supposed to be this man called her father until he passes her off to her what? Her husband. And until we get back to that, you cannot ask random black man to protect random black woman who doesn't respect his black ass anyway because she wasn't raised with a father, so she doesn't like men. As a matter of fact, most black women will listen to the word of a woman before they listen to the word of a man. Do y'all understand that this black women got bigger platforms than y'all black men do? They will listen to these black women sit up there with these leaves in their heads telling them about black men and pro-black power. They will listen to these black women going around acting a freaking fool, but they still will listen to them more than they listen to you, Cy. They still will listen to those women. So don't tell me to protect the group of women that look at the, each other as if they are protecting themselves. They don't need us, and they tell us that every day. 
So I refuse to be that person. You can do it. You can go ahead. But it's not my job to protect a group of women I do not know and that don't respect me. Show me respect. I'll show you protection. That's what every other community has. The white community has that. They demand the respect of their women. And when women don't give them their respect, they leave their ass out in the cold. Now tell me I'm lying about that. All right. Moving, moving forward, man. Powerful, powerful information coming from this end here. So you already know what it is. We got Tommy Sotomayor in the building. Um, I noticed, my brother, I noticed you wear a, a Donald Trump Make America Great hat. Why do you support Trump? Why do you support Trump? And did you wear an Obama hat, brother? As a matter of fact, um, I, I, I did not wear Barack Obama hat. I voted for Barack Obama the first time. And on the second time, I did not. Why do I have a Donald Trump hat? Because I voted for Donald Trump. I voted for Donald Trump because I believe he was way better than Hillary. And let me point something out to you. Any of you Negroes who was willing to vote for Hillary, y'all are the coons. Hillary Clinton <laughs> said that black, young black men are super, super predators. But y'all okay with that, huh? <laughs> because her husband smoked weed. Because her husband uh, cheated on her. Because her husband played the saxophone on Arsenio Hall. So he black. Uh, and her husband, do you know what her, his presidency oversaw? The largest incarceration of black men in the history of the United States. And yet y'all still love him. And also under Barack Obama, do you know that black male unemployment was the highest it had ever been since Jim Crow? And yet you still love him. That means that black folks are dumbasses because you will cheer for your oppressor. You will cheer for the people who don't give a shit about you. Now, Donald Trump comes in. And right now, black male unemployment is at the lowest it's been since Jim Crow. But everybody got a problem with him because he's racist. Wait a minute. Barack Obama didn't, didn't put lights up to make the White House black. He put the lights up to make the White House the rainbow color for gays. But you still love him. So the largest unemployment of black men since Jim Crow was under Barack Obama. And he turned the White House gate to the gay house and he did nothing for you. But let me tell you something, Si, and this is another reason why I believe that black women don't give a shit about black men, because they still love Bill Clinton, even though he put their asses in jail, the largest amount in the history of the United fucking States. And if they love black men, they would hate Bill Clinton. But they love Bill Clinton, a white man, for jailing black men. Then they turn around and love Barack Obama, who didn't love black folks. He loved gay folks, but they still love him. Why? I don't know. But now they hate Donald Trump, who actually got black men working. So, sign that if that don't tell you what black women think about black men, nothing will. Because when you're doing good, they get mad. Okay, so I take it that you really believe that Trump is going to help black people out. It's going to help black people out. Kanye West flipped on Donald Trump by saying, by saying that he was just being used. He was being used. What is your what is your um, take on that? Who, who was being used? Um, Kanye West, because remember, Kanye West was wearing a hat too. make a make America great again. So now all of a sudden, Kanye West comes back and he flipped on Donald Trump saying that he was just being used. Hold on a second. Go ahead, brother. Let me explain something. You said he was being used. No, Kanye West said he was being used. Yeah, I didn't he said say he, that. Kanye said he, that. But he didn't say he was being used by Donald Trump. He said he's being used in politics, period. Okay. That's why he wanted out of politics. But let me explain something to you. Every politician is using you. The Democrats have been using black people for the last 60, 70 years. And they've been using them every time because we know we vote for them every time and they give us nothing. So you want to talk about somebody using you? Let me tell you who uses black folks. The Christian church used black folks every fucking Sunday. Use the shit out of them. Nobody complain about it. They love it to death. You want to talk about people who use you, pimps who get all this credit, use them. What about the record companies who use these black people to push out uh, trash, the trash that Kanye has started to put out? Who was backing him up? Uh, it was, yes, it was, um, what, kind of, what, what kind of people? It was the Jews. And they let him use them, didn't he? Sure mm -hmm. damn did. They had no problem with it, did they? Every day, black folks are getting used. On YouTube all day, you got people using people. Hey, this make America great. You got people getting used all day. You know who brought me this out? A black woman. Thank you very much. Um, but um, you got to understand, 
People are getting used all the damn time and politics ain't nothing but usury. Somebody said DJ Vlad. Y'all love DJ Vlad. Thought that shit was funny that you, Vlad, what he did between me and Tyreek. Y'all niggas find that shit amusing. That white man got paid off all that. Not me, not Tyreek. That white man. Yeah, ain't had no problem with that though, huh? So all this usury you claiming somebody else is using, all we do is use people. You don't think the nigga that's got a bunch of kids by a bunch of women and he doing it just so he can find somewhere to sleep and lay up, he ain't using them women? You don't think those women who get all those kids and then get on the state and so she can get welfare, you don't think she using the state? People are using people all over. And yet all of a sudden, uh, the, the, the Republicans use him. Well, the Democrats do it all the damn time. Look at what they're doing with Don Lemon right now. Look at what the Democrats use Barack Obama for. All Barack Obama was was a mouthpiece of the black face of white supremacy. That's what he was. But you niggas was glad to have somebody that kind of looked like you. So you was happy. Usury is what the world is built on, sir. It is right now between you and I, you using me for views. And I'm using this is usury. This is the world. This is business. Let's stop acting like it's not. So if we learn how to play the game, we stop being a victim of the game. OK, um, break to me. Break down for me, my brother, Tommy. Um, what does what did Donald Trump mean when he said we need to make America great again? Because we know America has never been great for the black man. When he say again, well, I would say he's talking about way back there. So when he say make America great again, do you think he's talking about you, Tommy? Do we think you do? Do you think he's talking about us as a black nation? What do you think he mean? Did he ever break that down? Well, he doesn't have to. Just like when I say um, black. When America. have America ever been great for us? Go ahead, brother. Well, you said America was great for us. Right. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you something. If America wasn't great for us, then a lot of Negroes should leave. Let me tell you something, Sonetta. You, you, you probably counsel a few women. If their husband ain't great for them or their boyfriend ain't great for them and he's not good for them, what do you tell them to do? You tell them to leave. You don't tell them to stay there. So if the United States is so damn bad, stop fucking complaining and get up and leave. But we know if we go anywhere else, we're going to get treated worse. We know this because black people ain't welcomed everywhere else. Because if we were, we'd have left. So if we're not welcomed everywhere else and you got black people in Africa all over trying to come over here, you got black people in Haiti trying to come over here. And that should tell you that it must be great right now for black folks. You say, when has it ever been great in the past? Hey, you could look at it and say uh, that it wasn't great. But a lot of black folks who refuse to go back home to Africa, if that's home, the question would be, why then? Why? Why won't you go back? So if we won't go back, it even begs to, to say even though you were brought here against your will, maybe the best thing that happened to you was that you did come here because you have way more opportunities in your future generations than the other people who you left to. And then we need to quit trying to blame white people for bringing us here. Because as I said in my, in, in, uh, my show, when I did my, um, my live show in Dallas, I said, and I'll ask you a question, Sinetta. When blacks were brought here on slave ships, what was that activity called? You talking about when they was bought here on slave ships? Yes. What was it called? Um, dealing with the money, dealing with money um, situations. It was called slave trade, right? Yes, the slave trade. Okay. It wasn't called the slave kidnapping. It wasn't called the slave theft. Theft. It wasn't called the slave uh, heist. It was literally called the slave trade. Trade. So you had a group of blacks who traded blacks. For something else. And guess what? There never was, Sinetta. What's that? There's never been a freaking war where the African nations came to fight to get us back. They've never tried to get us back. So if they've never tried to get us back, then maybe at some point in time, we need to say, if we built America on our backs, then it's time for us to start making it ours. So we're not African-American. We are actually American. And we are as much American as somebody else. So what we need to do now is take on America and everything that our ancestors built and try to make it great for us. So no matter what the hat says, we don't give a crap. Whatever this hat says, we need to still make America great for us. So we can make a hat that says that. Make America great for us. Why argue what he said when we can make it mean whatever we want to mean? We're the same group of people who claim we took the power out the word nigga and made it mean homie. We're the same group of people who got women calling each other bitches now and saying there's nothing wrong with it because it's a, a term of endearment. 
So you mean to tell me we could do all that with these disgusting terms, but we can't do that with the Make America Great Again slogan? Come on. And ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like, you can go and subscribe to my channel. Go to my uh, Instagram. It is uh, TJ Sotomayor KOC. That's short for King of Controversy. King of Controversy. You can come and check me out. All right. All right, my brother. Uh, just handling some um, BS on the other end over there. Um, let me ask you, brother. Do you think blacks should be Republicans? If so, why? Why do you think we should be Republicans and not Democrats? If so, if you believe in that. <sighs> I love this one. Left wing, white wing, right wing. But they're both on the same bird. For some odd reason, black folks tend to believe that white people are racist. But once they put a D in front of their name, they are no longer racist. And that's the dumbest shit in the world. If you believe white people are racist, then whether they're Republican or Democrat, they are still racist. The same old damn white people. You just have them using you different damn ways. So if you if you are smart enough to understand that, then what you do is do the same thing. I don't know if you have any daughters or not, but what you would tell your daughters before they make a decision to date, make themselves available for more than one guy. Because if they're available to one guy, the one guy takes them for granted. So I'm not telling black people to be Republican. I'm telling them to make sure that Democrats know that they got a choice because when they realize they got a choice, they will now have to fight for your attention. See, right now, they don't fight for black folks' attention because black folks keep other black folks in line. Look at what y'all did with Kanye West just because this nigga decided to vote Republican. We claim to be the most diverse people on earth. If we so diverse, why the hell is it that if we vote Republican, we'll sell out? If we date a white woman, we wrong. If we talk certain way, we talk in white. If we do certain things. So we have to do the same shit. But white people. Do they tell other white people they can't be Republican? No. Do they tell other white people they can't be Democratic? No. Do they tell other white people they can't be independent? No. Why? Because they allow themselves to be diverse, which means you have to work harder for them. If us as black people said, we're not going either way until you sell us something that we need. Do you understand they would sell you harder? Because they have to. But right now, the Democrats don't have to do shit. Y'all keep each other in line. Y'all call Kanye a coon for just wearing a damn hat. Y'all try to destroy people's career because they voted for somebody who you don't even know. And do you understand that these people at the end of the day, whether it's Donald Trump or anybody else, when, the, when they get through voting and they get through screwing up the whole public, they go and have a drink with each other. Why do you believe this one group of white people hate that other group of white people? That's fucking stupid. If y'all are supposed to be so conscious, the one thing you should listen to is Malcolm X telling you, watch out for the damn Democrat. He said the Democrat is the problem, not the damn Republican. Go look it up. The Democrat is the one selling you shit that's making you weak. When he gave your woman the 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 I'll give you uh, food stamps and Section 8 housing, he said, get rid of the man to get it. Why would you see, want He didn't just say the Democrat. He said no, both. He said both of them. And, and that's what I'm saying. OK, that's literally what I'm saying. The point is, y'all kiss one group's ass that gives you nothing. Matter of fact, what they give you is like taking something from the devil. Everything the devil gives you comes with what? Strings. Everything he gives you, it seems good at first, and then he comes to collect his soul. Look at what the Democrats did. Everything they gave black people came back to what? Now they're coming to get they, your damn soul. And what was your soul? They took the fathers out of the home. They put drugs in there. They had you led by these women who are led by their emotions. And look at what happened to the community. What they gave you ruined you. So at some point in time, what we have to do is say, no, we're, the next vote you get from me is going to be because you earned it, not because you put a D by your name. Because let me tell you how fucked up that Democratic plantation is. Look up the name Robert Byrd. Robert Byrd was a fucking grandmaster, a, 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 a Klan's member. But because he put a D by his name, now black folks love him. That made no sense. Tommy Sotomayor on fire tonight, boy. God damn, Tommy. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you, brother. Um, I saw you did a show where you applauded the release of Ray Cruz. Cru Cru How you pronounce that? Ray Cruz? Cru 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 That's what my shirt say. Ray Cruz. Oh, see, I can't see it. I can't see that far. Come on now. 
Oh, yeah, I heard is- you did a. I saw you did a show on that when you applauded the release of Ray Karuk's brother. What was that about, man? I'll explain. Ray Karuk's, of course, for the people who don't know, he was the NFL player who killed his pregnant baby mama just because of child support. Tommy Sotomayor saluted him for that. I mean, what what's that about, Tommy? Talk to us about this shit, man. Okay, this is um, a man's right issue, not a black issue. Let me explain that. See, you have a woman who in uh, Savannah was a beauty queen, and she um, killed a black man while he was at his girlfriend's house. And she didn't do any jail time because she got on the stand and lied and said, this man was abusive to her. But even if he was abusive to you before, you followed him over to his other girlfriend's house and confronted him there. Another girl in North Carolina killed her boyfriend because he was cheating. Neither did time in jail. So this wasn't a black issue. This was an issue of I'm tired of women being able to get over and get off on shit like that. In Indiana, a woman killed this young girl, got out in 20 years. So I'm glad he got out. Number two, I'm sick of the fact that these women are able to try to fuck these men's lives over. So if you fuck a man's life over, whatever he do to you, I'm okay with it. I don't give a shit. And I'm telling you now, I don't care how many people say it. I don't give a shit. If I slap a woman and she stabbed me and kill me, you know what people will say? I should have kept my hands to myself. We should stop allowing women to be able to do the shit that they do. Look at what that woman did to um, Brian Banks. She lied on him. He spent six and a half years in jail. Nothing happened to her when they found out she lied. Men need to grow some balls in America and stop letting women be able to run over us and nothing happens to them. You don't, you don't threaten somebody's life. And that's what she did. She told that man, guess what? I'm going to have this baby and I'm going to ruin your financial career. Whenever you say something like that to somebody, you should leave. Sinetta, if I came and told you I'm going to ruin your business and make you not have any money, I would expect you to show up at my door because you got a family to take care of and it's fucked up that I would do that. Yes. So I'm just saying he did his time. I'm glad he getting out. He did the damn time. And just like when women do their time, we don't fuck with him when they come out. Why should we fuck up? Fuck with him when he come out. He did his time. Yeah, but see, here's the deal with this, though, Tommy, you know, absolutely nothing about the relationship. You know, absolutely nothing about what really went on. All we know is what the media brought out to us. You see, you automatically went against the system. No, 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 no. I didn't. didn't. Court transcripts. Court transcripts. Sir, I watched that trial. The entire Mm -hmm. thing. Even her friends came out and said that what she had did was planned on doing this the whole time. As a matter of fact, she had been pregnant once. Just hid it and kept sleeping with him after she lost that baby. She just hid it and kept fucking him to get another one. This woman trapped him on purpose. Her friends even said it. Everybody knows this. This is known. So I'm not making this up because she's black. This is what she did. It seems like, Brother Tommy, and listen to this real quick. It seems like you support anything black don't support. Trump, Megyn Kelly, David Duke, um, Fox News, etc. Do you notice that, brother? Do you notice anything about that pattern? It's like you support anything the blacks opposes and oppose anything that black people support. It's like when you see the majority of black people going this way, you go the other way. What's up with that? Talk about that. Um, why did the way to the gates of hell? Mm-hmm. So when I see everybody going a certain way, common sense tells me to go the other way. Because black folks have been led by their noses, by the masses, Mm. one way. And I ain't dumb enough to keep going the way that a dumbass group that I know is a dumbass group keeps doing. Number one. Number two, you did say black folks. So you spoke to us as if we're a monolith. So you again did what you claim that I don't do, which was or or that I do. You painted us that we all think the same way. Why did you do that, sir? Because if you believe what you just said to me earlier, which is we don't all think the same way, but you just said that we all think the same way then. Now, let me tell you something. When you see video of my show, there was all black folks there. It was just two two white folks at my my live shows, just two white folks, number black folks, and half of them were black women. 
So when you say I go the way that 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 a uh, opposite way of black folks, well then who are these people who are watching me? Are they not black? Are we no longer black because we don't follow what you say? Because see, you're judging our blackness because we don't follow you, and that's the problem. My blackness gets taken away and their blackness gets taken away because they don't think like you. And the majority of people who think like you or other people, the wide group of people, they fucking up. So why would I follow them? I could look at your life and I can look at who you voted for and I would be smart to go the other way. If you grew up in the hood and you saw 20 dudes go straight one way and all of them ended up in jail and you saw two of them go another way and they didn't go to jail. Why would you be dumb enough to follow the crowd because they're going to say you ain't cool? Because they're going to say you ain't down. And that's what y'all do. Y'all say you ain't down. You ain't black because you voted for one white man and not the other. one. Do you understand how ridiculous what you just said was that I voted for Trump, not the bitch who called black folks uh, predators, not 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 the bitch who was married to a man who oversaw the largest incarceration of blacks in history. You did this. You said this. And y'all believe that. Because I do what? Because I went for sure. Because I said Ray Caruso should get out. Ray is black man. Last I checked. Ray was a black man. Last I checked. Who but killed his pregnant boy. wife? No, no. She wasn't his wife. His girlfriend. His girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Right. But I'm saying he was a black. But the same people stood up there and cheered for OJ Simpson. So it was okay that he did that to a white woman? Huh? Huh? I'm sorry. No, no I'm not saying out- that, brother. Well, well, them the same outrage your niggas got for me for saying I'm glad this man is getting out after he served this fucking time should be the same damn outrage you should have for a man who killed two motherfuckers and didn't do no time. Do oh, you see? White. Do you see Ray Caruso as a hero or a revolutionary? Is he a hero or a revolutionary to you, my brother? I think he's a revolutionary, and let me tell you why. And because a hero, a revo- or both, or both. I, I just said I think he's a revol. I literally said I think he's a revolutionary. Go ahead. And then let me tell you why. Tell me. He's a revolutionary because if you look at what a revolutionary and a revolution is, what is that? Change. It is when and it it usually comes with bloodshed. Uh Uh-huh. America would not be formed if white people didn't get mad at the white people over in England and just say, I don't want taxes. And they literally started killing each other over it. Bloodshed. The Civil War. There was bloodshed. Brother against brother. Bloodshed. There's nothing going to change in America until something happens. And we have to say, look, look, uh, the Haitian Revolution. Was that, did they sit down and talk that out? Or did they fight that out? They fought that out. And the reason why, and the reason why the people say, and when you brought up protecting black women earlier, the reason Mm -hmm. why a lot of black women say we didn't protect them during slavery is why? Because we didn't fight it out. They feel like we should have fought it out when they tried to take us. Were they, they right? Like we Were they right? No, I'm saying I'm agreeing. Okay. I did a bit. I did a, a, that thing Kanye West said. And I had said that years ago and people know I had said that. And I said slavery was a choice. If mm. we had done like any of the other groups of people on the world, we would have said, fuck that. I'd rather die first. Once you say that, we have to understand what slavery was. Slavery was an economic exercise. They would not have had slavery if it was everybody trying to make it seem like it's racist. No, it was not. It was an economic exercise. They did it so they can make money. And when it stopped making money, they stopped doing it. When people think that the North didn't like slavery and the South did, it wasn't practical up North. They didn't like black folks just like anybody else didn't. Slavery just wasn't practical there. It was practical in the South because in the South, just like if you own a motorcycle, you can drive your motorcycle for for more months than if you lived in New York with a motorcycle because you have shorter winter, uh, you have longer winters and shorter summers. That's why it was. So when we look at slavery as an economic exercise, do you think they would keep trying to bring black folks over here if those black folks either revolted on the boats or threw themselves off or fought the, or whatever? They would stop because it's not making money. We could have stopped it by not making it a, 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 a venture to where a person was getting paid. And if you keep killing yourself and you keep killing them and you keep fighting, they'll stop. There's no reason to keep doing this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Now, a lot of people will say, well, but they would have to choose death. Yeah, but we the same black people today who say, if they ever tried to play me, they're going to kill me first. So if you can say that today in 2018, why couldn't you have said that 400 years ago? And today, these same black people believe they will not let white people mistreat them. 
then why couldn't they feel that way then? Yes. Um, Tommy Sotomayor, you are definitely a smart and intelligent brother, man. You are a smart and intelligent brother. A lot of us will say, man, we just need you to come back home and help us, help our cause, help us rise, help our women, help our children. You are definitely a smart and intelligent brother. Let me ask you, um, do you ever think, Tommy, that you are just being used as a tool for white supremacy unknowingly? Who, who would be using it? Um, the system, I'm quite sure you have a lot of uh, white subscribers that's on your page, that's on your channel, that may cheer you on. You might not know it could be all white people because of their avatar, but, you know, do you have, first of all, let me ask you, do you have a lot of white subscribers? I have a lot of subscribers, period. The majority okay, of my so do white. you think, is it possible that you can be being, you can be being used as a tool unknowingly for white supremacy and white power. I'll answer that this way. You, Young Pharaoh, Brother Polite, and all, and Dr. Umar Johnson, and all y'all pro-blacks. You know what y'all get to do on YouTube? Go ahead, brother. I'm going to say something. I'm going to point something out to you. You uh -oh. know what y'all get to do on this white platform called YouTube? Y'all get to spit whatever y'all want to about white men, call them cave devils and everything. And guess what? Your channels go nowhere. They're still there. Amazing, isn't it? That these white people that y'all going against allow y'all to keep spitting your rhetoric against them. But then somebody like me, who they are cheering on, who they're trying to help, you know, Blacky Black Crispy himself, who they put up on top. For some reason, his stuff keep coming down. Huh. So huh. who's really being used by white supremacy? The group of black folks who keep telling black folks stuff that ain't going to help them, that they keep allowing you to say? Because if the white platform was really going to shut down something, if y'all were saying something that was really helping black folks and hurting white folks, they'd have been took you down because you on their platform. But they only taking me down, huh? The one black person that's actually trying to help black folks, the one that's saying something that matters to them, the one that's getting them out of the damn crap that they're in. I'm the one who keep getting flagged down, not them. Think about that. All right. Tommy Sotomayor. Turning up. Um, what do you think, uh, Brother Tommy, about the Me Too movement? What do you think about the Me Too movement? Well, as a man who doesn't believe in the women's rights like that, I will then turn around and tell you I don't believe in the Me Too movement at all. It is just a movement to separate and destroy the family. It's like all this other stuff that they're putting out there. Just that the Me Too movement is equivalent to the gay movement. It is here to destroy the family. It is here to destroy men. The Me Too movement got people sitting up here saying, he grabbed my ass in high school. Now he 57 running for the damn uh, the United States justice. He shouldn't be able to run for justice because he grabbed my ass. Yet it, in the same sentence, got women running around with, with the, the slut movement. What's it called? A slut walk. So you can have a slut walk, but this man at 14 years old can't grab no ass. That's stupid. Look at what they did to uh, Bill Cosby. And you know why black folks didn't stand up for Bill Cosby? All oh, because he did what I did, which is point out the fucking problem, black women. Because you Damn, can point you know out what I was about black. to get into Bill Cosby, but go ahead. I'm gonna still ask you the question. Go ahead. That was my next Bill, question, brother. Because Bill Cosby, yeah, it's okay for them to tear down Bill Cosby because he spoke up against black women and the shit that they do. So fuck Bill Cosby is what black folks said. And that's crazy because this man had enough money at one point to be able to buy NBC and they realized how much power this black man had and they used them hoes, that ugly face bitch who he paid, whatever it was she said, that bitch up there looking like Howard Stern. But he, I have no idea what even made him sleep with that chick. But whatever their agreement was, Women have been making agreements with their bodies and men throughout history. Now, all of a sudden, a woman can use you for cash, get her shit paid for, then turn around 30 years later and say you used her and they put you in jail for this shit. Bill Cosby ain't the only one. Do you understand the Me Too movement don't go after Pookie and Ray Ray, the little niggas from around the block? It don't go after nobody poor. It only goes after men with money. And look at what it did for a year and a half. It destroyed men. It was doing nothing but destroying powerful men. And if a, as a man, if you are dumb enough to join the Me Too movement, I hope you get Anthony Bourdain, too. Oh, the reason I said that. 
And the reason I said that is because Anthony Bourdain backed up a little dumb bitch named Asia Argento, told her, I'm going to help you, paid her to help her get in the Me Too movement and ruin, try to ruin Harvey Weinstein. What happened to Anthony Bourdain? His girlfriend was fucking around on him. He ended up killing himself. And now the girl who helped start the... Um, I helped start the Me Too movement. Come to find out she was fucking a, a 16 year old boy. So she was a Me Too person. But we never put women in the Me Too movement. So it's no women and no poor dudes. It's only rich men. So any man that's down with the Me Too movement is a traitor to his to, to, to masculinity. He's a traitor to men. Because there's no way you want to listen to a woman constantly want to bring a man down because he said you got nice tits. Hmm. All right, family, brothers and sisters, once again, we are here with Brother Tommy Sotomayor. Let's get some likes in the building. Let's get some thumbs up for the video. And also, I want to let y'all know that, um, you know, my, where is it at? My super chat does work. I haven't seen a super chat go up in there since I've been on live. I'm trying to get another one of these right here, these microphones, so I can have my special guest start to come in. So I want to let y'all know that the super chat does work. All right, family? Now, and, let me, and, and if you could do me a favor, let me say ahead, this brother. to the people. Uh, I want to say this to the people on my side, too. Thank you, guys. I see across the top of the screen there. You guys have gotten it up there. If you guys can click that link in the, in the description box, uh, the one that says crispy cash, you know, so some crispy, go ahead and, 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 and put some crispy cash on your boy. <laughs> I'm giving y'all this fire right now. Go in and click that link in the description box. Get up to crispy cash. Go ahead and make it move. Let the people over on the other side, the pro-blacks, understand that we pro-black too. Don't let them make us feel like we less than black because we're not thinking like them. We should all want black people to think, not think alike, but to think. That's the problem. We encourage black people to think alike, and that's where we're screwing up. Encourage black folks to think. Diversity of thought is going to contribute to the growth of black people. All right. I appreciate that. That's real talk right there. Um... Let me ask you this question, my brother. Uh, Bill Cosby been accused of doing all these things with these white women, throwing, putting stuff in their drinks and stuff like that. And the majority of them, mostly white, would you say white? All white, right? Most, the majority of them white. Mm -hmm. How do you really feel about Bill Cosby knowing that these were white women? Do you think Bill Cosby is guilty or would you say he was innocent of this stuff right here? Are they trying to just pin stuff on him? Thank you. I see you, my brother, uh, D-Red. Thank you for that. Appreciate you, my brother. Yes, go ahead. On some level, yes, but let me say this. Oh, you said you see him as guilty on some level, but no. go ahead. I ain't going to cut you off. Let you go. Yeah, so on some level because he's even admitted that he did it. That was a problem. He admitted that he was doing this. But here's the thing. When someone admits to putting quaaludes in people's drinks, it's just like this dude by the name of Darren Sharper. And I don't know if you guys know it. If you're an old school football fan like I am, Darren Sharper was the safety of the Super Bowl winning uh, Green Bay Packers. Beautiful career. You would never believe somebody like him was raping the shit out of women. He was going all over the country raping women what he was doing. I didn't believe he did it. Then he he copped to it. And I was like, wait a minute. No, he was like he didn't have to do it. There are a lot of people, sir, who get off on doing shit like that. Charlemagne the God talked about it like it was funny. Of doing that, like it was cute. To put something in a woman's drink and fuck them while they're out. So hmm. do I believe Bill Cosby did it? Yes, because he said he did it. He openly said he did it. So there's a problem right there. Now, here's the thing. Somebody needs to start talking to these women because when I grew up, we were told you don't go to no hotel or no man's house if you ain't trying to fuck them. It's common sense. But apparently these women now, that's why I hate the Me Too movement. It says that women aren't responsible for their own fucking actions. Remember, the same women that like to tell men you need to keep your dick to yourself if you don't want to pay child support but they won't take away their option of if they get pregnant by a dude, they can go knock it out. Do you understand that if I don't take care of my kid, I'm looked at as a deadbeat, even though I didn't want you or that kid. But if you don't want your kid, you can give it up for adoption and you don't have to pay those people who adopt that kid one damn dime. And I ain't seen none of y'all go out and call none of these women who give their kid up for adoption a deadbeat mom. 
and she ain't paid for that kid and don't go see that kid and let a whole nother family raise them damn children. So we are allowing women to get away with shit. We are allowing women to act like they don't have responsibility over what the, what it, the decisions they make. Let me say this to you, Sai, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong. Here we go. Hold up. Before you say that, uh, I don't want to forget. Shout out to Solomon Debate Debate TV. Shout out to my man, Send Food to Pete. Thank you for that $100 donation. Thank you for everybody that's coming through with the donations. I appreciate that. I'm definitely going to get my mic, and I'm going to show everybody the microphone. You already know. The esoteric ther um, um, therapist, thank you. Shout out to you. Solomon Vision Debate. Thank you for everybody who's donating. Thank you for everybody who's donating on Tommy in as well. Because we do this for you. We are up here for you. Go ahead, Tommy. Well, I'm mad at Simple to Pete because he didn't donate to me, and I've been kicking nothing but facts up in this thing. No, I Simple to Pete, love you, brother. That's all he's been in here uh, saying, I Tommy, my man. So. I need to go and throw some money over in the coffers. That red ain't moving. <laughs> red again. Go ahead. But let me let me say this thing to you. you ahead, tell me if I'm, let me say this to you. You tell me if I'm lying. I just want your opinion. If I'm telling the truth or if I'm lying. If I'm in a club and I get drunk and I'm fucked up, a girl's in the club and she drunk and she fucked up. We both go home and we have sex. I wake up in the morning. She wake up in the morning. She wakes up in the morning and see I'm black and crispy and ugly. And she decides to go say she got raped. Do you understand they will charge me with rape? Because they will say she was not into her faculties and I took advantage of her. But that makes no sense, sir. Why? Because we both were fucked up. So what they should do is say y'all both were drunk, but they don't. The woman is still looked at as a victim, even though she made the conscious choice. Now, if I wake up, I done got drunk and this big old fat bitch done got drunk, too. And I wake up in the morning and I'm by this land whale and I'm embarrassed that I'm by this land whale. I can't go to the police and say this big land whale raped me. Even though I know if I was sober, I would have never fucked this land well. So as men, we got to start looking at the laws. The laws are punishing us for any decision we make. And women got somebody that's going to help them. We got, a girl came on. A girl was on, on YouTube. I did a story about two black girls on YouTube, two black YouTubers. One of the black girls got 12 kids. The other one got nine. Both of them are living on the system. Neither one of them have to worry about going to jail for not being able to take care of their children. Do you know any man with 12 children and he can avoid the system? You don't. Because if he got kids he can't take care of, his ass got to go to jail. Man, I got two heavy hitters back to back. Cynthia G was definitely dropping some bombs. And of course, Tommy Sotomayor is dropping bombs. And I think this is why a lot of people fall back sometimes, Tommy, because sometimes you hit people so hard where you ain't trying to curve it for them. You just hitting them with it. And, you know, I agree with some of the stuff that you're saying. Of course, I don't agree with everything, but just like you, you will never agree with everything somebody's saying. But I definitely agree with some of the things that you are saying, my brother. I want to say that. I don't care who don't like it. People expect Listen. me because you're here. Oh, you're supposed to disagree with every goddamn thing Tommy say. Who the hell is Tommy? You can't be agreeing with nothing Tommy say. Hell no. I'm not like you. For, I'm not like y'all. You see what I'm saying? So now let me wait, ask you this, my brother. Wait, um, wait, wait. Listen, go ahead, hold on. Go ahead. I just want to say something. My man sent for the people the hundred dollars on your boy. That's all right. Man, sent for the peace. Shout out to sent for the P. God damn. But, you but let me say this. Let me say this to you. Side my words, they hit you so hard, make you say, Oh my lord, thank you for blessing. <laughs> go on, nigga. <laughs> right, yes, no doubt, my brother. I appreciate that. Darius, shout out to Darius. Um, Denzel, Snooty, shout out to y'all. Thank y'all for the donations. Everybody who coming through with the donations, we do appreciate that. Uh, let me ask you this, brother Tommy. Should Do you think black men should date more outside of their race? Not all, not just stay with black women. Should we date more outside of our race, mainly white women? Not not mainly white women, but yes, black men should uh, open up because black women have never had a problem with opening up their choices. When they do it, they get cheered for it. Black women get a white man, they get a ticker tape parade for but it. But see, this they is the problem get... I got with you, Tommy. You keep well, you... saying black women. 
instead of, you don't say, well, you know, some women, some of our sisters. I never heard you say even the word sister when you referring to our women. Do you say some of our sisters do that? Um, you know, sit like that because when it comes to black men, you say, well, you know, some of the black men. But when it comes to the sisters, you say the women. The women. No, I know. <laughs> no, 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 what you're saying is not true. And you should have let me. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You asked me. You asked me. Should black men, you didn't say some, you said should black men. And then I said, I said they should leave their, and you said uh, white women mostly. I said, no, they should leave their options open. open. And then I said, because black women, when they date outside their race, nothing happens. Nobody got mad at uh, Tiffany Haddish for sitting up there lusting after white men every fucking five minutes. Nobody says a word. Nobody says a word. Nobody says they're going to boycott uh, Rihanna because she got a non-black man. It doesn't happen. So what I said is men should do it too. The men should take the option because when women do it, you literally got a pro-black black woman by the name of uh, Maya Angelou who married two white men and they still act like she the best shit ever. So black men should open up their damn, their, they should stop letting black women try to guilt them out of dating outside of their race because black women are sitting and trying to trap black men right now. They want to have first right of refusal. Black women want to be able to tell black men, I don't want you because you lame. I don't want you. Have you ever noticed that when um, that when people like Serena Williams, when they date a black man, he got to be a thug. He got to be hard. He got to be all this shit. Then they turn around and marry a square ass white man. Why can't they marry a square ass black dude? Mm. Why a black dude that square don't get the same damn love that this punk ass white dude get? Every Kim time you see him with a white Kim Kardashian or Serena Williams, which one you taking home with you? Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Tom, you you're off the chain with this tip, boy. Would you, would you like me to explain it? Go ahead and explain it, brother. Okay. If I take home Kim Kardashian, number one, when I take home Kim Kardashian, everybody's going to tell me, even if they hate me, they're going to say how fine my girl is. How do I know? Because when I had a white girlfriend, you know how many niggas said the only reason that white girl with you is because you got money. So that means that black women believe that they're below white women because they don't say when a black woman's with me, the only reason that black girl with you is because you got money. As a matter of fact, they only look at mixed and white women as better than them. As soon as I get a mixed woman, you got your light skin upgrade because you got money. So black women are self-conscious because they only big up non-black women. They go around saying, you got to have money to get one. And if you got to have money to get something, you got to have money to get a Bentley. You got to have money to get a mansion. You got to have a money to get stuff. So that lets you know that black women put white women on pedestals. Number two, if I married Kim Kardashian and I had kids with Kim Kardashian, no matter how much bullshit they say about me dating this white woman, when I bring my mixed kids around, who going to be the first ones to rub in their hair and tell them how pretty their hair is? Black women. But when I marry Serena Williams and I have a kid, who going to be the one to tell them how ugly my fucking kid is? Black women. So why would I have a kid with Serena Williams when I know all they're going to do is say how ugly my kid is, how ugly my girl is, when I could get with Serena Williams, I mean, when I could get with Kim Kardashian, and they're going to tell me how pretty my fucking kid is, and they're going to tell me I must be doing well because I got this damn white woman. Because every time a black man's with a white woman, they assume he's doing well. That's a problem. <laughs> Tommy Sotomayor is in the zone. He's in the paint, baby. He's in the paint, going deep in the paint. Okay. Bro, I, don't do want my, I don't want my kid called Crispy no more. So I should get mixed kids so they won't call him Crispy. Okay. This is a quick sidebar because it just came to my head. I, I, I was supposed to ask you this when we opened up, but somehow I got distracted and, and went somewhere else. So let me ask you this again, and then we get right back to it. Tariq Nasheed. With no hate, I know y'all had problems in the past. I'm talking about now that you've seen his music come out, his album drop. What do you think about his music, brother, with no hate? I love it. I'm going to tell you, Tommy, I love it because I'm old school. And when I see music, I was just, I was pumping to it. When I seen the video, I seen he was having some fun up in there. Mink Slide. What do you think about the album Mink Slide and have you heard it, brother? Listen, I believe I helped him sell some CDs because I was saying it's time. I've seen you. And then, and then I had a, I had I a seen dance. You going crazy on my brother, man. I was jamming to that. So I had a dance. He, he should have had me choreograph his That's video. Right. I, I was jamming. Look, dude, I'm the one brother, and you can say this side just from dealing with me and tell these people the truth. I don't know if you will or if you won't. If you tell them, 
I'm the one brother that no matter what I go through with y'all, no matter how much arguing I do with y'all, I still support every one of y'all and I'm always having y'all back. That is true. I, mean, I agree. What argument we had. Yes. I went up in your I went up in your place. I punch and then I didn't say I still you wanted me to come on. I come on. I kept reaching out to you even when, even after all that shit happened. Because that I, is true. That, and I, I'm I glad you brought that up because now let me say this, Tommy. Believe it or not, brother, I was like most. I, I think I was one of the mad, the most maddest brother in there that that happened to you on my watch. You might think, no, nah, son, no. I was mad as hell that it happened on my watch because that's the last thing that I would like to happen. On my on my watch when I'm doing something because what who gets the backlash behind that I do I mm -hmm. get that and this is why Dr. Reggie even said yo brother I'm walking you down too I'm going out with you you see what I'm saying so that's the last thing that I would want and you see what happened my brother came down and got you and brought you right up to the that's my brother brought you up upstairs to make sure you would be safe in our watch you see what I'm saying so. Regardless of what everybody tried to say, and oh, Saul was down. No, it wasn't, brother. That never happened on my events. So why would I let something like that go down on my events? Because that right there sets up the, it opens up the door for other people to start coming up in here wanting to fight. Nah, man. Look at, I was getting ready. See, what the people didn't know, they was getting ready to get a special treat with you because we was getting ready to bring you up on a goddamn stage. And I think Sister I Am Segment at the time was going to have a powerful discussion with you on the stage. And so when, when I left, I see the commotion in the back and I see all this crazy shit going down. So I went back there and I seen it and I was like, oh, what the fuck is going on? So my brother came down and make sure you all right and brought you up to the balcony with him. You see what I'm saying? That, so, man, I want to say I, I never did get a chance to really apologize to you for that. So I want to say I apologize to you, my brother, that that happened on my watch and at my, on my um platform, brother. Well, I want to tell you, and, and people know I'm not big on apologies and stuff like that. Like, I don't make people. I'm a grown man. I get over it. If it didn't kill me, it made me strong. And I look at it and I said, but I'm glad you said that to him because people like, he just stuck his way up in there. He wasn't wanted up in there. Nah, like, no, no, no. Let me say this real quick. When Tommy Sotomayor came in here, I told Tommy Sotomayor, you got to pay a donation at the door. I remember it like, like it was yesterday. It was only, what, $25. Tommy Sotomayor, I think you handed me or my wife a $50 bill. Check. It was a $50 bill. And Tommy said, go ahead. And he gave us a $50 donation. So what the hell I look like trying to do something to my brother because I disagree with some of the stuff? Hell no. We, we didn't support that. Me and my wife didn't support that. None of us in there supported that. Nobody on the House of Consciousness supported that. I want you to know that, brother. Okay? No, now, I believe you. And see, what's the funny part is, and that's why I was trying to tell y'all, you got people in the comment section that saying, I should have been punched more times for what I'm saying. So then I say this in response. Anything white people do to any one of these niggas talking about black power, they deserve it too. Because when you're going around calling white people, uh, uh, whatever it is, when you call them cave people, then white people should be able to come and fuck you up because they don't like what you're saying. By that logic, you dumb niggas. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. Niggas love telling other black folks they deserve to get hit. Hit a black person because you don't like what they say. If people started doing that exact same fucking thing to black folks, we'd be wiped out quickly. This makes no sense that black folks want to keep on saying that dumb shit. You deserve it. You deserve it. That's why we are in the shit that we're in now. Because black folks think because you don't like what somebody say, you should be killed. It's stupid. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, shout out to Paul from H-Town. Shout out to Paul from H-Town. A $100 donation. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. Um, let me ask you, brother Tommy. Um, <clears throat> do you think that white women look better than black women? Keep it real. Do you think white women look better than black women? No, as a matter of fact, I'm more in the dark-skinned women than light-skinned women. Mm -hmm. But then when I did a dark-skinned girl, they make fun of the dark-skinned girl and call her ugly. These same old pro-blacks. This is what I'm going to tell you from my dating that these people online have seen. And with the dark-skinned girls, they're ugly. They're basic. When I'm with the light-skinned girls and the white girls, they're only with me because I got money. He couldn't get them women if he didn't have no money. So look at how black folks treat them. We're the same group of people who say to black women, 
she pretty for a dark skin girl because the, we the ones who talk to each other like that. So don't try to put that crap on me or other black men. Half of the time when we date men like trophies, we play games so we can win trophies. We have the we were if, if men would probably not live in the houses we live in if that didn't get us a nice um a, a nice set of titties and run around the house that women didn't want us. Men want women that other women say is that's a fine woman. You did a good job. Black women sit up and look at they envy the shit out of it when a black man is with a white woman. So why wouldn't that black man when he get money get one? You're not praising black women. You don't praise dark skinned women when a man got one. Look at how how when you watch even even the brother polite for as much as the, the women that he was with. When he got that middle of the middle of the road, a brown, a, a mid brown woman, people liked her more than they liked the damn three black women he was with because they was dark skinned. The dark skinned women, they just want to see their ass all the time. Even when you hear him describe his wife, she got a fat ass. But they didn't say that about <laughs> right. that other one. Right. Think about it. Do you think so, polite be going in the back door sometime? When I say back door, I ain't talking about the women booty. I'm talking about. I'm, <laughs> I'm not talking about the buttocks, y'all. Let me clear what I'm saying. I'm talking about, do you think Polite be crossing over sometime? I, I think that came out wrong. So I'm saying, do you think he be crossing over without us knowing that, like with them white girls? Because you'll see him in the pictures too with them white girls. If you go on his Instagram, he be all hugged up with them white girls, bro. Do you think Polite be sliding off sometime, brother? First off, we got to say no homo so we can make sure. Yeah, no homo. Like no homo, man. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to say this. Polite will tell it. you in a minute. He he down with Becky. He, he like Becky too. Listen, if you're a man in this world, you're a fool for not fucking every race of woman. Let me tell you why. Why would a mm, black mm, man mm. criticize for fucking white women when white men, even when black women were considered cattle, would still go fuck them? It doesn't matter what it is. You And again, black women, no matter how pro-black they are, they still a suck a white dick. They'll fuck a white dude. So I don't care, brother polite, fuck a white woman. Malcolm X did it and Martin Luther King did it. White puss is good. <laughs> All right, brother. I got you, man. Woo! Tommy Sotomayor going in tonight. Oh, and back to Tyreek Nasheed just to finish that point? Yeah, yeah. Go uh, ahead. Go right back to Tyreek Nasheed in the, in the music, in the mint slide. Go back to that. I, I like... I'd rather hear his music of where he's talking about doing something fun than hear him talking about that first shit he was doing when he was talking about wash your ass and he was pap, 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 when he was thug and he was a gangster, when he was when he was CB4 part two. I'd rather him do the kind of music he's doing now than doing that music, because at least this music isn't contributing to the degeneration of black folks. But I do think it's odd that a man that's supposed to be pro-black, he put out my information, he put out ta, uh, the, the, uh, Maj Teray information, our personal information, trying to get people to dox us and stuff like that. But he ain't done that to no white folks. He didn't do that to Tucker Carlson. He didn't do that to uh, Jared Taylor. He hasn't done that to any white person. But every black person you see Tyreek go against, he make a fucking doll about him and he try to ruin their fucking life. All while living in a white neighborhood, all while having a half white uh, wife with a Jewish mom. And that's why he got mad at me because I brought up the fact that the, the movies didn't talk about all I because I wasn't upset with him. I was just saying the movies should have talked about um the, the Jews role in the slave trade and he got pissed at me saying that okay so now i became mr crispy and all this fucking shit stupid shit and black folks backing that shit because let me say something to you sonetta you should be able to hate me without calling me crispy because every time you call me crispy you make fun of every dark in person that's my color it makes no sense that you shouldn't have to say that's like having a white friend let me ask you something if you had a white friend sonetta and that white friend got mad at a black person and he said you fucking nigger and then he looked at you and said, oh, I don't mean you. I just mean him. Would you be cool with that? Hell no. So why is it that black folks are going around saying, I know what Christy mean, but I'm okay with it because I don't like Tommy. This is what you're doing. And this man who you see, who's supposed to be so pro-black, keeps finding his way to fuck with and fuck up black people. But nobody white. His whole, look at the end of any one of those um, hidden colors. At the end of it. It's a bunch of Jews and white people who produced that, filmed that, and all kind of edited that. And none of y'all think that's weird. Now, none of y'all think that's that's odd. 
that this pro-black man who talks all this shit about white people. All right, get all on right, hold show, on, brother. He got hold a whole on, lot brother. of respect. Hold on. Let's not go off track, man. That's your brother, man. That's your brother. Oh. I don't want you to so much to beat down, beat the brother, because I might have him on my show soon coming up too. I know too. what I'm saying is the idea of when we talk about agent. Right, but now hold on. Listen, listen for a minute. This is what I want right quick. You and Tyreek Nashi are definitely a force to be reckoned with. Y'all are some brilliant, smart brothers. Do you think it could you could ever just come back together again and do something together, do some type of work together? Can we see that in the future from y'all brothers? Sonetta, you know I don't hold grudges. I have been saying it several times. Okay. Times. I don't hold grudges with black men. If my whole job is to try to uplift men and then turn around and say, men need to do X, Y, Z, I have no problem with it. I don't hold hate. The people in your comment section, the people writing that dumb shit that I've never met who just can't stop fucking with me, you got niggas in your comment section. I don't know them at all. And they've been stalking me for not once or twice, but literally for years. A dude in there right now named Afro. I've talked to that dude. Let him call in my show. Try to be nice to that dude. He won't leave me the fuck alone. When you got people who literally have a beef, a normal person would have a beef with somebody and walk. Niggas just fuck with you every day. If white supremacy is so bad, why fuck with me? Why not go fuck with white supremacy? Nope, you'd rather stop me because that's gonna help white, that's gonna help defeat white supremacy. That makes no damn sense. There ain't no white person that's stalking though. Let and me you ask gotta you understand. This. I don't have a hatred towards Tyreek and she. I don't. Good, brother. That's what's up. Let's leave it right there. We we want to try to mend this fence here, man. Cause y'all two are some powerful brothers, man. Uh let me ask you this, brother. Why do you pay so much attention to the peanut gallery? Why do you pay so much attention to the peanut gallery? The peanut gallery we call the chat room. Not everybody in the chat is the peanut, but it's mixed up with some with some evil people. I'm going to say that. And it's mixed up with good people. So we just call it the peanut gallery. Why do you focus so much on the peanut gallery, brother? Because if they in there to hate or love, it don't matter. They supporting us. Just by them being in there, they love to hate. That, that means they supporting us, brother. Go ahead. And see, that's the difference between the way you build your audience and I build mine and everybody else builds theirs. The black community has been built on confusion. And every time we have something that's worth a fuck, whenever we let dumbasses in, that's why what happened when I came to your event is because even though the dumbass supported your event and left you some money, Look at what the dumbass cost you in the long run. Mm -hmm. Every time you let dumbasses in your family that come to the family reunion because they family, what do they do? They get drunk and they fuck up the whole event. We as black people, we've got to start acting like the Jews did in the Bible when they put when they went into the wilderness for 40 years. They went into the wilderness for 40 years because they didn't want some of them dumbasses that came from um, Egypt to go into the promised land. They needed them to die out because they knew if they brought them, they would still be assholes. So the reason I talk to the peanut gallery is because the peanut gallery, there's more people who believe <laughs> and act like niggas in the peanut gallery than there are who got common sense and don't want drama and fights. And all it takes is one asshole to fuck up everything. And we've all been in situations where we've been at a club and one asshole shut the club down. We need to start calling out the assholes because there's too many people who look at the assholes and then start acting like the assholes. There's, there needs to be a certain level in which we say, we don't like Tommy, but this man's on this fucking show. And anybody who comes in here, start calling him crispy. We blocking him. Anybody who come in here talking about his fucking kids, we blocking him. Anybody who starts talking about he gay and stupid shit like that, we're getting them out because they're ruining the dialogue that's being happening. And that's what I do, how I run mine that way. We have too many fucked up people coming in to our stuff. And just because they leave a dollar or a view, I don't need a dollar of view that much. So if what you said is true, then black people should be able to just sit there and love white people as long as they donate money. If what you just said is true. OK, uh, brother Tom, do you think we waste so much time studying black history? And, and, and the other part is that do you think we should... Um, Forget about black history. Should we do we waste so much time studying black history? And should we forget about black history? I don't think we should forget about it. But, but do you think we, think we waste too much time studying it? I think we focus too much time talking about it. I think we talk about stuff that does not help us today. 
We cannot rest on our histories and our ancestors' uh, laurels. There's a problem with that. The problem is we're resting on the laurels of other people and saying they were kings and queens. Well, that has nothing to do with us because let me tell you something. They weren't transporting kings and queens to the United States, so it's stupid to say it. Even if every, if every nation in Africa had a king and a queen, how many could they transfer? Couldn't have been a million of them. So it's dumb to believe it. And do you right. think those nations were selling off their kings and queens? No, they were selling off their slaves. So if you were a slave over here in America, guess what you probably were back in Africa? A slave there too. So maybe we should start telling the truth about our history so therefore we can change what we are instead of sitting there lying and blowing smoke up people's ass because telling people that they're kings and queens has not made them greater. We've been doing it now for how long and has it made us better or worse? So maybe we should start telling the truth about black history and say we don't want to repeat it like how the Jews, the current Khazar Jews, tell their people they talk about when they were enslaved and all that stuff. And they say never again. They talk about what happened with Hitler and they say we're going to fight our asses off to make sure that never happens again. So what we should do right now as black people is the same damn thing. We should say, hold on a minute. We know what they did to us and we need to make sure it never happens again. Like when you talk about Republicans versus Democrats, think about this. Who's trying to take away your fucking guns, Republicans or Democrats? Democrats, yet black votes Democrat. Yet when blacks are, have been in America, our history in America is what? White people coming and run, uh, run roughshod over us because they have more weapons than we do. So why would we vote for a group of people that want us to be unarmed? Think about that. Mm -hmm. um, earlier, you said that you, you do prefer black women, Chet. Yes. All right. So why do you constantly um, use terms like uh, the black woman smell? I think I heard you say that before. The black woman smell sexually. Uh, do you think all black women smell, brother? No, I don't think. Man, <laughs> I'm just going I'm, by what I heard you say one time. I know I'm not trying to be funny, but it starts to ruin the discussion whenever it's like, do you think all? When I've already said, I don't think anything is all. Okay. I don't, I don't all right. Gotcha. Gotcha, brother. So I don't believe in the I'll check that. Go ahead. But, but I do believe that what's happening in the black community is that a lot of these women don't even know how to take care of themselves, basically, because they were being raised by women who probably were hoes themselves, like Richard Pryor. The majority of us black people have been raised by women who were fucking whores. Let's just call it what it is, because if it wasn't, we wouldn't have 70 fucking percent of kids that were raised in the, uh, that are born out of wedlock. The majority of the black women who are having us are whores. Look at the online, how the, the women who are acting the most ratchet are women who are what? Women who are prostitutes, women who are openly selling themselves. So at the end of the day, you got to stop and say to yourself, I'm only pointing out that these women don't know how to take care of themselves. The majority of them don't because they didn't have a woman that even sat down and told them how to take care of themselves. You know, most black women don't even know how to do their own hair because their mothers didn't tell them to do. Mm -hmm. Um. I saw I saw you had a white guy on your show one time and he said that white people are far more intelligent than black people. Do you believe that? And if not, why didn't you challenge him? Um, SAT scores show it. IQ scores show it. And the fact if the history is true that black people say we used to be kings and queens and they used to walk around on their knees and slaves. I mean, in caves as, as dummies. If you let that group overtake you, it's the equivalent of saying to me today, well, the warriors are better than the other teams. Well, then I agree because they beat the other team. I'm sorry. Until black folks try, until black folks can stop doing dumb shit like say he need to be punched because I don't agree with him. Crispy, 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 crispy. I'm not going to believe that that group of people are fucking intelligent. A group of people that I have to tell to vote both parties, not just one, cannot be very intelligent because I'm not that smart. And I shouldn't have had to tell you this. A group of people that are arguing at me because I'm saying black women look better with their natural hair than with weave. That's not an intelligent group, sir. That's not an intelligent group that would take from a group of people who are giving them something instead of saying, I know what you're giving me and I don't want it. That's not an intelligent group. It's not an intelligent group who believe that white people are racist, but won't leave those right white people. They cannot be too intelligent. A normal group of people, if they believe that the group that they're around is is oppressing them and they have the opportunity to fucking leave, they would. Right now, there is a, um, a caravan of people 
marching towards the United States. Guess where they're leaving? A place where they feel like they were oppressed. And they're marching here on foot to get to a better place. Haitians have done what? Gotten on rafts. Cubans have done the same thing to get away from who was oppressing them. So if black people were being oppressed as they say they are, it should be some black folks on some motherfucking rafts getting out. But it ain't. It should be some black folks. Most black folks, niggas won't even go and get their damn um, passport. So I don't believe that you can be very intelligent if the normal group who's being oppressed runs. Black folks, we just sit here and complain. Mm. Do you think do you think whites are the supreme race? Do you think white people are the supreme race? I don't think there's a supreme race. I think it's just like the NFL or any other sporting event. I think some people I think that every um every nation has had its time on top and then they fall. Every nation that had Rome's were on top at once, the Ottoman Empire, the Genghis Khan, all of these people have been on top. It's not a superior race. Everybody just learns. And what I'm trying to get black people to do right now is learn. Blacks can learn. Stop saying blacks are the only people who say, I don't want to be around them white people. Them white, I hate them white people. Them white people do. Hey, Tommy over there talking to them white people. Why would you talk to David Duke? Well, you know, David Duke has no problem talking to him. You know why? Because he want to know where your fucking mind is at. So why would I not talk to him? And if we were smart, we want to know where his fucking mind is at. When you ignore a problem, it doesn't make it better. It makes it worse, Sonetta. Ignoring your headache won't make it better. Ignoring your foot ache won't make it better. Ignoring racist white people and saying don't talk to them won't make them stop being racist and won't make you know anything more about them. So if black people, what we need to do is learn from whoever we believe is the oppressor. And then that's how you beat them. You remember in football when uh, the San Francisco 49ers was winning? What happened? Everybody tried to learn the West Coast offense. Right now, everything that's winning, if you want to win, you learn from them. White people are winning. We need to learn from them. And we got the best seat in the fucking house because we live with them every damn day. So we should learn from them. All the devious shit that they do, we should learn. All the ways that they fuck over the Indians and fuck over the Chinese and fuck over these people, we should learn. We are right in their fucking house. We have no reason to not know what they're doing. When I, what I get from you, brother, is that when I see you, the way I see you talk about the black woman, let me say, let me first put this out there. Um, on the scale of one to five, do you think the black woman is the worst woman in the world? Just say from scale of one to five, because by listening to you, I would assume that you would say, yes, she is the, she would go to the last one, five on the scale of one to five. Do you where do where do you put that sister at? Where do you put the black woman? Five is the worst, right? Right. Today in America, I think that black women are the worst. As far as when it comes to stewards of children, they are worse. When it comes to mates to marry, they're worse. The numbers bear it out. These all things are numbers can bear them out. These are things that your eyes can bear out. Black women don't even give a shit about their kids. They talk to them like they don't give a shit about them. And this is the majority of them. So I won't say all because there's some great black parents out there. There's some great black mothers out there. But we're not talking about the few. We got to talk about the many. Because just like there's a bunch of white people who died trying to end slavery, we still look at the majority of the white people didn't give a shit about us. So why would we sit up there and pat the few on the back when we got to deal with the many? Now, hold on, Tommy. Uh -huh. Look how you just eased in there a promo for white people who who helped, you said, to try to end slavery. No, no, I didn't ease in there. I said okay. they were. But let I me said, say this, Tommy. They should be out there helping to end slavery because it was their no good mothers, Tommy. It was their no good daddies who raped, robbed, murdered, tortured, castrated. I mean, we went through we went through so much, Tom. And it's like you're not understanding, Tommy Solomon. You it's like you're not seeing the condition, the problem that we was in, the state that we was in. It's like you just automatically, my brother, just come out of nowhere and say, because of this, and I charge a black woman because of that and this, but it's all because of something. I'm not trying to make no excuses for it, Tommy, but you gotta yeah, understand like, like, these rich white like, people that you see today. That's going to colleges. They are reaping the benefits that they have stolen from your mother, from my mother, Tommy. They have raped the world, Tommy. 
I know you know you. that. You a smart man. Let me tell you why you are making excuses. Go okay. ahead. Because, because as a presenter, you asked me a question and then didn't let me answer it. No, no, I'm letting you answer now. Go ahead, brother. No, but I'm saying, but as a presenter, you literally just asked me a question and stopped my answer to say what you felt about what I had even started. Instead of saying, let me let him finish. Because remember when you've done it, I've had to take notes. Like I've had to take mental notes when you were talking. Just okay. so when you got done, I would then address what you said. So I was just asking for the same thing. Go ahead. Now we gotta my bad. I apologize. Go ahead, Tommy. Because now we've lost the question and you got to do me a favor now. And 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 give me the question again because okay, give me a second. I got you, I got you. My bad. Sometimes I gotta I gotta uh practice my reporter skills a little better, my interviewing skills. You know, I'm not used to doing this, man. Yeah, I, I know it's getting hard. So so let me let me just say this then. Now remember, was, let me let me rephrase it so you can understand. Yeah, please, it. please, please, from, please ask it from one to five. That's where I was at. The scale. Okay. I said, and then I, I think I answered that. I said, I believe when it comes to dating, they're the least because then they're five because the numbers bear that out. When it comes to mothering, they're last because the numbers bear that out. Um, and then I was saying something and then we got cut off and I hate that because I was trying to go somewhere. And when we got, shit, I was saying, oh, I was saying, okay, I said, not all black women are fit under this category. I said, just like, and I used an analogy. I said, just like, not all white people were against blacks, but I don't deal in the small number who tried to help free slaves. I'll deal with the big number who tried to keep them enslaved. And then you said, well, they should want to help uh, get black folks out of slavery because it was their ancestors that put them in that. So what you want from white people is that white people should see the evil that white people do and call it out and even be willing to die to stop it. But me as a black person and being told to eat and allow the bullshit that I see black people doing, unlike what you ask the white people to do. Isn't that odd that white people are supposed to go against their own because it's wrong, but I can't go against my own when all I do is call out wrong. None of y'all talk about what I do and say what he's saying is incorrect. Nobody does that. Do You know what y'all say? You shouldn't say it like that. Your mama black, your kids black, but nobody says that video you did was factually incorrect. So I'm not supposed to call out my own people for doing shit that's hurting them. But them white people are supposed to die fighting their own people and their own cause. Because remember, you said those white people, kids were able to go to college. Those people were able to have plantations and all this stuff. Well, by that logic, they're fighting against their own self-interest when they want to free slaves. Think about it. That's their own self-interest. Why would they fight against it? Why aren't they called coons? Why aren't they called soft shoers and Uncle Toms or, or Aunt Jamar Quavius or whatever the fuck they'd want to call them? White people should not be fighting against white people. What you just said proves that you believe white people are more benevolent than black people because you believe white people should fight against their own and die to help black folks, but you don't believe black folks should do the same thing. <laughs> All right, Tommy, going in, man. Um, let me ask you this. And by no means by me asking you this question, my brother Tommy, I'm not, I, I want to make sure you don't feel that um, I don't really like bringing this up, but because it was in the mail and I got the got it. Well, then don't go into my personal life. Go into, don't do that. Go in, I don't know y'all personal life, so I actually not going to mine. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you. That's so, fair, isn't it? Because so I, I would I just say this without going into their personal life. Hey, go ahead. Have you ever thought about becoming a pastor since you have some of that in your family? Have you ever thought about being a pastor, coming out, teaching the flock, teaching the people? I think I do that now. It's very difficult for me. I'm not a Christian fan. I believe white folks gave black folks Christianity, and Christianity is one of the biggest things that have caused black people anguish in America. So I'm not a Christianity fan. I know there's I, people don't like when I say that. I'm not a big Christianity fan. My mom is a pastor and I still have never, I grew up in the church. I know the church. I quote the Bible. I know the Bible. I just think that the way that black people treat it, they treat it too, too literally instead of what it is, a book of parables. And so would I ever be a pastor? I don't know what the future holds. I never thought I'd be doing this. I honestly didn't even do this to be doing this. I would look as like the Bible. I would see myself like uh, Moses. Moses didn't want to do what the fuck he was doing. He said that Aaron should be doing this. He didn't want to do it. Well, let me tell you, do you think I signed up for this? No, I didn't. You think I want motherfuckers I don't know 
uh, when I was at your place, while after one punched me, uh, we looked over the video. Another brother was behind me with a fucking knife, and we caught it on video. You think I want to do that? Do you think I want to be around a bunch of niggas that that, that, that can't accept that my opinion's different than theirs, so they think I, that I should die for it? You think I want to be a part of that? No. But in, and I started doing something I thought was right. Do you think I, who you think helped me get, the Tyreek, them all of them said that I was in the Illuminati because I got so big so fast. <laughs> this was all done by me. There was nobody helping me. There was no white people that's done this. There's no white people that's done that because if I'm supposed to be backed by so many damn white people, let me tell you something. My numbers would be bigger than they are and when I get donations, I wouldn't have something as small as that $400 there because white people know how to give their damn money because you've seen them white boys on YouTube and was it they be getting like $40,000 a motherfucker show, right. do they not? That's real. So don't tell me I got a bunch of damn white people backing me up. Don't See, tell they me say we need this, they make sure they get it the next day. That's right. So That's don't, real don't talk. Tell, so don't tell me I got all these white people backing me up. I've done what I've done because it was right. That's it. I don't want my little girl to wake up to feel like she got to be a twerker and got to walk out with a head full of somebody else's hair on her head just to feel beautiful. I don't want my daughter to walk around and feel like she got need to have skin lightning clean cream in order for her to feel beautiful. I don't want my daughter to feel like she got to date a white boy to have mixed kids so her kid doesn't get treated like she gets treated now by people who don't like her daddy. I don't want black boys to feel like if I go to a Republican rally, I may get fired or killed from my job. I don't want little black girls to feel like if I go line dance and I'm going to be told I'm acting white. Mm. I don't want little black boys who, who listen to rock and roll be told you a sellout because you listening to rock and roll when common sense and knowledge of yourself and history would tell you black folks created that art form that we're now being told we can't even listen to. This is how ridiculous we are as black people. We pigeonhole ourselves. No one pigeonholes us more than us. So would I like to be a, a pastor? Yeah, but I think I'm doing, a, I think my pulpit is what I have right now. And as I'm trying to go on the tour, the stage, because I, I believe if I talk about, here's the one thing I do that a lot of other people don't do. Every black woman I talk about, I talk to them. I don't talk about them just to get money off of them via ass. I talk to them. I talked about these two girls who had all these children. Do you know one of them girls actually took that? She had 12 children by 12 different men. Had a YouTube channel bragging about it. Do you know after I talked to that girl or talked about that girl and she saw that video, guess what she did the next day? What's that? She took her entire channel down. Mm -hmm. Nobody had sat down and talked to her and tried to tell her it was wrong. Too many people try to tell her, I'm a proud mama. Think about how many black women run around right now with on their damn name, proud mama of eight children by eight different dudes because that shame has been taken away from the black community. Do you know the only people you can shame now are black men? They'll shame the hell out of a black man. You, you, you Your clothes in the water. You ain't got no car. You, you, you work at Walmart. They'll shame the shit out of us. You a deadbeat dad. You been to jail. You ain't hard enough. They shame us, but we can't say shit about them. We got to praise them. In the words of Tupac, even though you was a crack bean mama, you always was a black queen mama. The yes. dumbest line in history. Hey, we hey, need to stop that. Because as you many? said, as the, as, yes, the men ahead, are your Hold on. as the men are your protectors, then you need to put them in position to protect, not constantly beat them down and then ask them to protect you. I don't believe in beating somebody down and then say, hey, protect me. That doesn't make any sense. Once you start telling black men they ain't shit, then you get what you get. And I'll finish it with this. Black women, if you're finding a hard time finding a good man and you say black men ain't shit, who's raising them? Single uh -huh. black mothers. If black women were really good people and they were really upstanding people, when they are 100% getting to raise these boys by themselves, black men should be the most respectful men on the planet. But the first person we hear call a woman a bitch is usually who? Our black mothers, our black grandmas, our black aunts. You can go on Instagram, Facebook, anywhere right now and hear black women refer to other black women as bitches and hoes in front of their little sons. And then when their sons grow up to call women bitches and hoes, this is what the result of having these single black women raise these children. Mm -hmm. All right, brother Tommy. Um, a lot of people say, and I know you know this and I know you heard them say this, black men and black women. They say, maybe you've been hurt by a black woman 
all black. Yeah, maybe you've been hurt by a black woman. Have you ever in your life been hurt by a black woman? I know I have, but that didn't make me go off and do what I do. But have you ever been hurt by a black woman in your life, Tommy? Yes, sir. And it's in um, just like white men have been hurt by white women. Here's the difference. It's a dumb thing. And anybody who says it, let me point it out to you. I'll point at you right now. You're an idiot and a dumbass for saying he's been hurt. That's why he says that. Let me tell you something. Malcolm X wouldn't have had his movement had he not been hurt by white people. Then he wouldn't have changed his movement had he not been hurt by the Muslim. Uh, Martin Luther King wouldn't have been doing what he was doing had he not been hurt by somebody. Everybody who starts a revolution and starts a movement were hurt by somebody. That's why they started the movement. Can you name some people who started a revolution and started a movement who weren't hurt by somebody? That's how it works. Change happens when you see wrong. And most people who see wrong, see it wrong when it happens to them first. So, no, I have no problem with saying that. But I'm not doing this because I was hurt by a black woman. That's stupid. And let me tell you something, Sidenetta. What you're doing when you ask this question is you're allowing women to make the narrative. Women make the narrative by trying to make you feel bad. You know, when they go around saying, is your beak mad? Instead of dealing with what they did to you, they now try to make you feel gay or whatever it is. So you no longer have a point or feelings. Well, I won't let them do that. So you can't tell me, oh, he only doing that because he hurt. That's stupid. Common sense says whether you've been hurt or not, how about if it's right or wrong? So Black Lives Matter, they only running around doing it because they've been hurt, right? The, the abolitionists were only running around doing it because they've been hurt, right? The Me Too movement's only been doing it now because they've been hurt, right? It's a stupid thing to say. Grant what I'm grant, grant what I'm saying of either it's true or it's not. And the things I say are true. And because they can't not because they cannot defeat. The logic in my arguments and the facts in my arguments, they didn't turn around and say, you've been hood. You must be gay. You got a little dick. You only saying it because black women won't talk to you. You only saying it because they make up every excuse other than, is he telling the truth? All right, my man. Um, do you see, Tommy, do you see white people as pro-white? Do you see Jews, Jewish people as pro-Jewish. Do you see Chinese and Korean and Spanish pro themselves? To an extent, let me explain. The one thing that made Jews really good was that Jews got rid of dumbass Jews. Unlike every other community gets rid of their dumbasses and blacks praise their dumbasses. We're the only group who praise a nigga for going to jail. We're the only group who praise a nigga for being real. We're the only group who go around calling each other nigga all the damn time. We're the only group who sit up here and openly show disrespect to each other all of the time. We're the only group who sits there. So if we were pro anything, you know what we would be pro? Pro pruning. Because any group, and if you've ever done any gardening, you know what pruning, do, pruning does, right? Pruning makes it grow better. Black folks need to prune the black community. We need to say some people ain't allowed to be here. Some people don't need to be around. And even when Moses went to the promised land, guess who didn't get to go into the promised land? Moses, because he broke a damn rule. And we need to start having some damn rules. And once we have some damn rules, we'll cut motherfuckers out that can't get in. Oh, you still all right, but you can't get in. Like when Malcolm X said, white people, you can contribute, but you can't be a part of it. When you can start having rules to your, to, to, to your club. Because white people got rules to their club. White people have no problem calling out their trailer trash whites. And white people don't try to save all whites. Because if white people tried to save all whites, guess what we would have never had? The Civil War. If white people tried to save all rights, guess who we, what we've never had? Republican and Democrats. White people don't try to save all whites. So why the fuck do we try to save all blacks? If you really were pro-black, you'd be pro-pruning. So that's the question I was going to ask you next about being pro-black. What's wrong with being pro-yourself? If you are pro-black, don't you think that that right there can probably help us, you know, motivate us to doing more for each other as a people? If you are pro-black, like for example, Tommy, the people that see you as the enemy because they disagree with you, had they be pro-black and you be pro-black is, I can't hate on my brother because I'm hating on myself. I don't want to hurt my brother because I'm hurting myself. That's my brother. When I see you, I see me. So that right there is like being pro-black to me. What's wrong with being pro-black, Tommy? 
I just said there's nothing wrong with pro-black, but if you want to be pro-black, be pro-bruning. Again, black folks made the mistake when we love white people so much, we beg them to be integrated with them. We should have never asked to be integrated with white people if we already knew how they felt about us. What we should have asked for is equality. You don't ask for integration. You ask for equality. When you ask for equality, what you say is, give me my own land. Let us separate. We don't need to be with you. Let us compete with you on our own merits. Do you understand that black people had a higher rate of in birth, uh, in wedlock birth in the 50s than white people did? Because we had to stick together because they didn't let us in their crew. Then they turned around and let us in their crew. So you had black men who were millionaires because they had the black baseball leagues and the black this and the black that. And these black men, they felt powerful because they had their own. And it was taken away from them when integration came, didn't it? Because black folks wanted to go play in the white leagues now. Black women wanted to go clean out the white houses and wanted to go work with the white folks. And black folks wanted to go to the white colleges and all of this stuff. It weakened us. It didn't make us stronger. We were dumb enough to fall for the damn apple again that the devil gave us. If we were smart, we would have understood when the devil gives you something, it comes with strings attached. They gave us they gave us integration and look at the strings that came attached to it. Look at us now. Now we have the lowest in birth uh, in wedlock birth rates. Now we kill each other at a ridiculous rate when we weren't doing this in the 50s. Why not? We got more stuff now and we're degrading ourselves more today than we were then. Because we took the apple and we bit it. Because we thought we want to be, we love white people so much. And it goes back to what I was telling you. We won't leave. We love white people. We don't want to not be around white people. We want to be in the masters instead of create our own damn golf, uh, our golf resort and have our own fucking masters. We want to get one of their awards instead of having our own damn awards and not worry about it. Black folks are so damn creative that everything we do, other people want to be a part of it. So why the fuck do we keep wanting to be a part of their shit? Because we are in we, we are infatuated with white people. That's why you hear people say, well, white women do it, too. Whenever you hear black women tell me, well, why are you talking about us? White women do it, too. Number one, if you are a queen, wouldn't I hold you to a higher standard than the peasant? Number one. But number two. You've never heard a white woman say these words. Black women do it, too. When they get called out by something, you never hear them say black women do it, too. Because let me give you an example, um, Si, and then I'll let you go to the next question. If you won five games in a row playing chess against a retarded person, do you think I'd be impressed? No. Do you think I'd be impressed that you won five games in a row against a retarded person? No. Would you go around bragging about Went in a chess game against five, uh, uh, five chess games against a retarded person. No. How do you think white people view black folks as that retarded person? So they would never compare themselves to what we achieve, to what we do. So when black women go around saying white women do it too, they're the equivalent of the retarded person who played the person who they knew weren't retarded and they almost beat them once. They're taking solace. They're taking that in almost beating the white woman because if they thought they were better than white women, they would never, ever, ever say white women do it too when they're called out on their crap. Should we as black people, should blacks just get over slavery and all the wrong things that was happened to us and just try to get along? I don't think we should try to get along with white people. I think we should try to get along with ourselves first. And getting along with ourselves comes with a code of conduct and a brotherhood. And a brotherhood means that we still have to prune. I think the problem is we believe that black people, because of their skin color, they are a, we are kin because we got the same skin color. Well, no, we're not. We're the same people who go around claiming mixed people. If somebody got a white daddy and a, a, and a black mama, we call that kid black. Well, why do you think white people don't call that kid white? Because they don't want to have anything to do with it. Do you understand colonization means to come into your land, kill your men and rape your women to confuse your people? That's exactly what we are right now as black people. We're so confused that anything close to white is considered beautiful. We're so confused that we're so dumb that we'd still call a black man crispy and say, oh, it's getting on his skin. But how many black girls do you think right now watch y'all call me crispy and know that they've been called crispy, too? How many black boys know that they've been called crispy too? So no matter how much you try to hurt me, you're hurting them too, dummy. So black folks don't need to try to forgive white people. They need to forgive themselves first. 
They need to forgive themselves so they can start over on a clean slate and then build from there. You cannot sit down at the table with any superpower when you bring no power. So what black people need to do is in the world of Tupac, he told me not to go to war until I got my money right. So I went and got my money right. Now I'm ready for fucking war. So black folks need to stop trying to act like white people are their fucking enemy and white people are their rival. Because let me tell you what, I don't know if you're a carpenter man, but if you have you ever hammered a nail? Uh-huh. Is there a rivalry between that hammer and nail? <laughs> 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 Tommy, you a funny ass dude, man. <laughs> hey, I heard rivalry. you make, I heard you make a statement, Tommy, that if blacks took over the country, it would fall in a couple of years. Why do you think that? Why? Why would you say stuff like that? <laughs> you still think about that hammer and nail? I know it, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got that one off. You got that. Listen, first off, the reason I say it is because look at what we're doing on something as small as YouTube. YouTube is just a place where we share ideas. And in a place as small as YouTube where we share ideas, we got black folks on here saying they're going to kill each other because they don't share ideas. Wordplay. See, we come to share ideas, but we get mad that we don't share ideas. And so if you got a group of people who cheer that on, you got a group of people who you had a, an event and you were bringing me in there, a counter, a counter person. So you could talk to that person, hear more, know more about that person, get that person to know more about you. But instead, violence ensued. When you have a, I went to a, um, a, a Hennessy party in Dallas. I guess I should have known better than to go to the fucking Hennessy party in Dallas. That was my bad. But I went to the Hennessy party in Dallas. But before I got there, they had to shut that down because niggas ruined that. Was out there fighting. Was out there too. We can't do certain things together. We can't build little things together. So how the fuck are we going to run a country? What are we going to do? Kill the person who decides to think different than us? We're going to stab them. We're going to beat them up. We're going to shoot little JoJo because of what he said. We're going to shoot this rapper because of what he said. We're going to shoot this person because of what he said. No, we couldn't run a country for two years because we don't like each other enough because we still want to be around white folks enough. So there's no way in hell we'd run a country and nobody would take us damn serious. They would take us right back over because we're too busy fighting over dumb shit. YouTube is a white platform where black folks can get on here and this done changed several black folks' lives. Yet niggas are trying to take other niggas down. You ain't seen none of these niggas go out to David Duke YouTube channel. You ain't seen none of these niggas sit up there and troll shit at David Duke and Jared Taylor YouTube channel, have you? Mm. you That's them niggas doing right it. There, they man. ain't no channel in my nation. They ain't no <laughs> channel and they in my channel. But they ain't over there. So that tells you something. Right, right. Hey, if there was no blacks left on the planet, do you think the white man would be able to survive without black people? You mean without white people? Um, no, no. Without black people. Do you think the white man would oh, be okay. able to survive without black people? No, because every company needs its workers. You need your laborers. The same way of why they like Mexicans over here, because they're cheap labor. Black folks are cheap labor, and we will always be in demand because we are a physical group of people. And we are, we are more physical than mental. And because we're more physical than mental, people can use us. We got to become more, we got to let our minds reach the level of where our body is at. Because we are strong people and they love making us work. Why do you think they put us out in this, out of slavery? If they could have made the Indians work like that, they would have done that because it would have been cheaper than going to get a group of people. They were already here. Boom. But they didn't. Why? Because they couldn't. Didn't work. White people need black folks. Because black folks are good slavery. They're, they're, they're good workers. Slavery didn't go away. Slavery's still here. It just changed. That's all. It's a different form now. Again, you had more people enslaved and pe uh, people in jail than enslaved. 50, 52% of the slave population is black folks. They just mm -hmm. took us out of the plantation and put us in the jails. So it's different. So I don't think, I, I don't think they could survive without us because it, we're, we're too easy to, we, we're, we're too easy to manipulate. Black folks are too easy to manipulate. Y'all are literally fighting other black people over which white person did you vote for? Do you understand how stupid that sounds? Black folks fighting other black folks over which white person they voted for. If that ain't brainwashing, I don't know what it is. Have you ever lost 
a debate. I guess I've never had a real one, but um, I think the reason I don't lose debates because I don't argue facts. Meaning, do you think you, polite would be your toughest debate? I don't like debating polite. You know that brother polite is he he he, he uh, have word diarrhea. He's my homie, but <laughs> he he my homie, but brother polite just get to talking and he think that because he's saying a bunch of words in a row that he win, and because he laugh at the end of the sentence that he won. I, I would t- I take debate seriously. If I'm going to have a debate, I want to debate on the facts. I want to debate on the points. That's why it's very difficult to have a debate with black folks. Black folks treat a debate like a peanut gallery. We want to make the crowd laugh at the other guy. We want to make the crowd like me more than the other guy. So then we'll sit there and say, well, that guy has more charisma. So I like him, even though that facts he didn't bring. So I look at the base, just like when I'm talking to you now, I have no problem with you because I'm not talking to you. Right. I'm talking to your question right. and your audience. So I wouldn't care who you were. I wouldn't care if you were the clan member or if you were the, the NOI. Whatever you asked me, I would try and answer as truthful and honestly. And if we got into a debate and you were saying something that was true, and I keep telling everybody this and nobody learns from me, the key to winning the debate is not to argue things that are true that are said by the other person. The key to winning a debate is acknowledging it when somebody else is right and sticking to where the points are, where they're wrong, not just constantly being at odds with the person. Mm. Being at odds is not the point of the debate. Getting to a conclusion and a solution and an understanding is the point of a debate. And you debate the facts and the merits of the case. It's the equivalent of trying a case in court. Now, you can win a case in court if you can get a white jury to sympathize with the white victim and the black person didn't do it and you don't have enough evidence. And that's why you see blacks get railroaded, is it not? Because they don't argue the rule of law anymore. They argue the rule of emotion. Mm -hmm. If all black women were to stop wearing weaves, stop being ratchet, what would your show be about? If all black women did that, I'd be like Thanos and I would go to my farm and I'd sit down and watch the sunrise. I don't want to do. Here's what's funny. If people really hated what I do and they hated me, you know how they could stop me? Stop giving me content. Tell me I'm lying. Nah, but they want to kill me, Sinetta. But they want to flag my stuff. But they don't want to take away the content. So the problem is the content, not the nigga talking about it. But they don't want to stop that. They want to stop the content. They want, I mean, they want to stop the guy who's using the content, not the guy, or not the people who are creating the content. That literally makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, before we open up the floodgates, um, I don't know how long you could be for the questions, family. Remember, I'm asking one more question, and we're going to open up the line for questions and answers. And remember, ask your question, hang up, and listen to his response. It's not for y'all to go back and forth and debate. Ask the question. Hang up the phone line and then listen on your monitor for his response. Now, the last question, I will ask you the same thing that I asked Sister Cynthia G. Can you you do me a favor? Yes, go ahead, brother. Can you do me a favor if you end up doing that? You got to at least give about like a a, a 10 minute or so break or something like that. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. uh, I'll let you get that break off, brother. Yeah, let me get a break and then we can come back. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. So I'll ask you the last question like I asked Sister Cynthia G. And um, before we go and open up the floodgates, I want to ask you, can you name five, can you name five great black women? But this time, I'm going to say dead or alive. Also, what do you like about them? Can you name five black great women? What do you know about them, dead or alive? I mean, what do, what do you like about them? My grandmother, young lady, see back down the picture there. Mm-hmm. Uh, before she passed, um, it's funny that most of the people think that what I'm saying is from a place of he hate black women. Well, my grandmother was a black woman, and literally the ideas that I have are words that she spoke. I heard my grandmother speak this way about black women. How disappointed she was about what she saw. And it was funny. We used to laugh at her doing blah, blah, blah. And then I started realizing she was right. And she was speaking from a place of hurt. Like they said earlier, are you hurt? Why is it that common sense wouldn't say the Negro's hurt because of what he sees? 
If I value black women and you have children, Sarnetta, let me tell you something. When you see your kids go and get straight D's in school, you're hurt. If your kid goes and get pregnant at 14, you'd be hurt. If your kid goes and goes to jail, you'd be hurt. Why? Because mm-hmm. you expect and you want more for them. So maybe if black people gave a shit and thought deeper than the surface, they'd say maybe this dude is hurt because he gives a damn about them because he cares and he believes that they actually are worth more than what they're putting out. And the only way to get your kids to do right is usually to be difficult on them because when they tell you the neighbor's kids get to stay out all night, you tell them that's because their parents don't give a shit. And because I give a shit, I'm not going to let you just run wild. Because I give a shit, I'm going to point something out. And that was my grandma. Number two, I would say Coretta. Because Coretta had to be around her husband and had to watch her husband be slaughtered for a group of people who, if she was alive today and when she was alive, she realized that everything he fought for, these people took for granted now. You fought for a holiday that nobody does anything on this holiday. You fought for a month of black history when nobody does anything on black history. You fought to be able to sit in the front of the bus all just to go in the back of the bus now. So then I look at her and I understand what did she have to deal with? People telling her and showing her pictures and audio of her husband cheating on her. And yet she still said the movement's more important than my fucking feelings. So when you got a woman who would say the movement's more important than my feelings, that is, that is a great woman by any stretch of the imagination. Harriet Tubman, Harriet Tubman, the person who was real enough to say, if you trying to stop us from being able to get these black folks off this plantation, then just because you black don't mean I won't put one in your head, too, because we got (laughs) people who need to get the fuck off this plantation. And this plantation is a problem and we got to do it by any means necessary. Then I'm going to go to Betty Shabazz. Betty Shabazz had to watch her husband get slaughtered in front of her and her children. Betty Shabazz had to watch her husband grow from being Mr. I hate white people to understanding something that I grew up a long time ago and had to tell my own mom. Hey, babe, why you hating all these white people? Who gave you this job, mama? None of them black folks was trying to give you a job. As a matter of fact, when you got that job, it's some black bitches you used to hang out with that tried to get you fired, didn't they? Uh Uh-huh. Them same black folks that wanted to see you do well once you start doing well start hating on you for doing well. So I look at Betty Shabazz and I say to this woman, she had to grow with her husband. Her husband had to go through changes and she had to go through them with him. She had to watch on the news them tell that he is a a sellout and a coon to the cause. But she had to believe in his cause. And when you got a woman that's beside you that's that strong, any man can do anything. My grandmother used to say women, black women have lost their idea of what power is. They don't realize that their power is in their ability to be able to get that man to do what they want. Remember when you, back in the days when you farmed, if you owned a horse or a mule, Plowing the field was a lot easier when you treated that horse well, wasn't it? You got a lot of work out of it. All you had to do was give that horse a rub on its mane, a wash, and a carrot. Now look at women today. Si, you got a wife. Your wife, if it's a noise downstairs, who go downstairs to check on it? Your wife or you? Of course, me. Of course, me. Of course, me. So you got the power. You know to go to go look. Mm-hmm. If somebody tried to bust up in that house, you'd lock that door where your wife was and you'd fight to your death to save your wife and children. That was damn right. Damn right. right. Damn right. So women have lost what they know or what maybe they don't know, but it should be taught to them what their power is. Your power is to be able to get that man to run through a brick wall for you. Your power is in your soft touch. Your power is in your soft voice. Your power is in your cooking and cleaning and making that man feel like the king of his castle because when he feel like the king of the castle, he'll fight a whole invading army to make sure that they don't get across that damn moat. But because we have lost that power, because those women don't do that, there is an issue. And Betty Shabazz did that. Betty Shabazz stood by that man. She stood by that man up until the day he died. And even after he died, who had more, um, who showed more grace? than this woman did. Who showed more? And then I'm going to say something that's going to throw people off a little bit. And it's hard for me to say it. I don't want to say it. So I'm going to try to find another one because I really don't want to say this. Let me see if I can find another one. Jesus Christ. You know what? 
I'm gonna go with Oprah. I, I was gonna say Beyonce. Oh. I, I honestly was gonna. I honestly was gonna say Beyonce because I, I really like. I found, I went from <laughs> I hate Beyonce to I like Beyonce. I'm gonna. I, I will. Let me tell you why. Beyonce married that man, and Beyonce stayed with that man, and black folks saw a black woman with a kid by a black man. And do you know that Kanye West baby get called real pretty, even though they claim they hate Kanye West and they hate the woman he had the baby with, but they love the fact that the baby's mixed. So the baby's always called cute. But guess who was called ugly? Their baby. Her husband was called ugly. The baby was called ugly. And yet she still love her kid and treat them kids well. She still treat that man well. She still had, when when I listened to her song, I didn't know what upgrade you was. And I kept listening to it. I was like, oh, she's saying, I'm going to help build you up. And I'll still take a back seat to help building you up. I I didn't think about that when I first heard the song. So then I sat back and I thought about it. And I said, no matter how much crap they've talked about this woman and her husband, they've stayed together. So maybe we should start praising families in the black community. So maybe we should praise Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Because they've stayed together no matter what the fuck people have been throwing at them in an era in which people don't stay together. Maybe we should start doing that. So all these women who stayed with this, these men. Now, see, weave ain't bad. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to say this to you. People ask me about weave. Let me point something out to you. I don't give a shit if black women will weave down to their assholes if we could keep our families together. If we could keep the patriarchy instead of the matriarchy. If we could get our children to be educated and off of the fucking system, if women would spend as much money as they spend on their hair as their kids private school, because I look at my kid, my kids in private school. But how many of these motherfuckers who yell at me got their kids in private school, but they'll spend their money on their red bottoms and shit like that. So we don't value our kids education. So I don't give a shit what a woman put on her head. She can put a whole a dead cat on her head as long as she acts with class, treats her kids with class, raises them with respect. And we go out and we build the so-called black unit to where we're not the laughing stock of America and the world. So it ain't about we. We is a symptom of the problem. I call out the symptom, but it's just a symptom of the problem. It's not the problem. All right. Once All again, right. thank Once you, again, my brother you, Thomas Sotomayor. Can you take me on Can you take echo? me on the echo? I think you, you got me on the echo now. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I want to say thank you, my brother. We're going to finish the second half. We're going to take a 10-minute break and, um, you know, do what we got to do. And I will open up the phone lines and um, keep this conversation going until our brother Tommy get back. I'm going to go in there and get me a bite to eat, you know, and do what I got to do. And I'll be right back, my brother Tommy. Thank you, man. For, I appreciate you for coming on over to the platform, my brother. Peace and black right. power. Stay tuned, family. We'll be right back at you. And guys, I'm going to shut it down. We'll be right back when I come back. All right. We'll All right, my brother. Thank you. 